Hey, everybody. Hey, what's Hello. up? Welcome to the stream. It's, uh, it's Mike and Nathan here uh, from Volterra. Uh, yeah, happy to hang out with you guys. Looking forward to this full day of uh, building boards. Uh, Music Mike, boards. Mike, what are we building today? So, yeah, I had, I had an idea for a project. Um, my, 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 my guy, Nathan, here, he's an avid bass player. Um, I've held a bass, and um, we wanted to make a, an effects pedal, something that is actually really... Uh, useful, um, I mean, in, in music, but something that surprisingly is, uh, we get a lot of uh, users asking specifically about this. We actually get a lot of like boutique pedal places that are like, hey, we think the V1 could work for this. And I thought we could do a really cool proof of concept. So I uh, went online, looked for, um, you know, a standard schematic, um, uh, I think it's uh, Guitar Gadgets, I forget the, the website, um, took a look at, at a, a standard uh, for a, a known uh, fuzz pedal and uh, rebuilt it uh, from scratch, printed on the V1, and uh, I mean, we've got this, this little box right here, which does the thing, it, it's pretty cool. So we're gonna take you through building that entire thing. Uh, some things have been pre-prepped, like I've got a, um, the box already painted and all that jazz, uh, but in terms of the electronics, the board, we're gonna build that start to finish today. Yeah, and, and the big thing is we've heard from a lot of our users that they wanna see a full uh, walkthrough of doing a two-sided board. Yeah. Um, in, in a lot of our past streams and just video content, we have to do a lot of TV magic to make it fit into an hour or a shorter period of time. So totally. that's why we're here today. We're, we're doing a long <laughs> format stream so we can try and pack as much in as we can. Yep. Um, there may be moments where we have to move to TV magic. Uh, we've got a couple pre-printed boards um, just because the bake cycles are super long. So. Uh, we might shift to those uh, if needed, but uh, for the most part, we're going to try and do everything on stream for you guys here today. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be great. All right, should we get started? Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Um, all right, I assume you guys, uh, can, we, can we get um, software up? Um, I mean, we've got the V1 ready to go, you can see. That's, that's great. So what's our first step for today, Mike? Like, sure, yeah, so, starting on so I've got, I've got the, the V1 prepped. Um, I've already got my board clamped down. Um, we're gonna be drilling, so I have a sacrificial layer underneath it, um, because obviously I don't wanna drill into the heated bed. Uh, so yeah, first things first, we're gonna drill. So I'm gonna open up the drill step. Um, we're going to do an aligned print. Technically, I could actually do this with simple as well, because this board actually fits well within the confines of the, the two by three board that we're using. Uh, but I'm going to do a line just because I like to do a line. And we're going to do a line for the rest of this as well. Um, so we're going to get our ink file. Um, this is my ink file right here. And then we're going to get our holes file. Let it load up. Huzzah! All right. And here we've got our, our board. Um, it shows all our holes. You can see the little fiducials in the corner, which we've got on our board. And then all these little green dots are the... Uh, the holes that we're going to be drilling. Now, are we drilling just one size of holes today? Yeah, yeah, or are yeah. Multiple holes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I when I originally did this, um, I designed it so that it actually used two sizes of holes. My vias were smaller and used the smaller rivets, and then my my through hole components were going to be using the 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 large um, one and a half millimeter holes. I decided to just scrap that and just do all the holes the same size, just because that's going to make this faster and easier and all that jazz. Um, additionally, um, one of the questions that we get sometimes from users is uh, how to do uh, vias without using rivets. Um, so I'm actually going to go over that as well here. And I find that um, even though maybe it's a little bit wasteful for ink because it uses more ink, uh, it's, it's going to be uh, visually a little bit easier to see how I fill those rivets, if, or fill the vias if they're a little bit larger. Very cool. So that's what we're going to do. So let's continue. Uh, we're going to clamp the board, yada, 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 mount the probe, move to feature. So our probe, obviously, it's got to calibrate its position so it knows where it is, and then we're going to position it on the board where it needs to be. Um, one thing uh, worth noting, um, for anyone who is out there and they're doing uh, drilling, uh, very important to make sure that you are drilling FR1. Um, FR1 is the, the type of board that we're using. Uh, traditionally, of course, most boards are going to be FR4, uh, but of course that contains glass fiber, and you want to be very careful about that. Um, if you're drilling it, you've got glass particles in the air. That is not something you want to breathe in. Um, FR1 is, is going to be a little bit better for that. Um, so something to keep in mind. Yeah, now if someone's board isn't labeled, um, how can they tell if it's FR1 versus FR4? That's actually a really good question. Now, I mean, obviously... 
ideally if, if you, you want to look and find a board that is labeled. Just yeah, like, because that way you know that it's the right thing. However, um, one of the things, and I don't know if we'll be able to really clearly illustrate it, but we do actually have uh, some pictures. Um, when you take a look at FR4, um, if you sort of uh, reflect it against the light, you can actually see sort of a, a, um, a, um, a pattern of, of uh, like the material's uh, sort of fibrous. Like it, it's sort of like, a, it looks like it's woven. I guess is, is the yeah, way to sort of look at it. Yeah. Um, when you take a look at FR1, it's very flat. Like it, 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 when you look at them side by side, like it's, it's clear as day. Also, if you look at the edge of the board along the perimeter, yeah. um, it's, it's going to look very, very, like I say, fibrous. And it's also generally going to be a lot cleaner. It, it cuts a lot more cleanly than FR1 does. Um, so that those are sort of the best ways to tell. Yeah, FR1 is going to have almost like a jagged, flaky edge to it. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the other thing worth noting as well is that the uh, our at least our boards fr1 the uh whole the the vias are just straight holes whereas i believe on all of our fr4 boards they're actually like plated vias yeah um so that's a, a way to know as well um, so i'm just moving the probe into position over the first fiducial we're going to measure it great um one thing worth noting um i am using the fiducials on this board um, generally, the way that we do alignment, because of how it works, we basically take an anchor point and then we draw a line to the other um, the other point that we're measuring, and then that's sort of that's how we figure out our rotation. Uh, you want to have points as far apart as possible. Um, I a lot of people um, have recommended previously to always use. Uh, features that are as small as possible um, and I from my perspective that really comes down to the user what you prefer to do um, yeah, Small is great if you're trying to really pinpoint the center of, mm. of a feature um, But for the actual alignment accuracy the further apart the points are that you're using Yeah, you're just gonna have a more accurate rotation. Yeah, definitely definitely more valuable um, one thing I like uh, if I have the opportunity I actually like to use um, larger holes where I can actually drop the probe into the hole when measuring and that way you can kind of see the ring around it. and I find that's a really good way to try Absolutely. and get that center. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to probe. Let me just check my probe settings. Yeah, okay. I generally have my, my probe pitch set to 2.5 instead of 5. Um, you can get away with whatever you like. I just, for something like this, because we're doing it live, because I worry about like if we have a height map issue, I like to do a little bit higher resolution uh, probe mapping uh, just because I don't want to you know we hit an error and then we have to sit you guys through an extra five minutes of yeah. of probing yeah and and what does the 2.5 mean i know right. the default settings five sure, so sure what happens when you make it 2.5 so 2.5 um now <laughs> there's actually it's it's slightly more complex than i'm gonna make it um and i actually had i remember uh troy when he was explaining this to me he actually gave me like the long form version yeah but basically you're just sort of looking at distance between two probe points yeah that's that's basically how you want to think so about if it we have a lower number it's going to be points a shorter are close together. distance, so we're going to be probing more points on yeah. the design. Yeah. yeah, which obviously is going to make give you a, a more accurate representation of the, the height of the board, or the topology of the board. Um, and that, that's actually really useful for a lot of things, depending on what you're doing. There's, there's, it's never bad to have more pro points. Yeah, it's just going to take longer. Yeah, it's just going to take longer. It's like this is the only downside. Um, and really, it depends on, on your project. And so depending on, on what you're doing, like if you're just doing Hello World, something really simple, like you can probably even increase that and do it faster if you want to. I don't recommend it, but you probably could. With something like this where I really want to make sure it goes right the first time, I like to just be a little cautious. Yeah, yeah and for what we're doing right now, probably not a big deal either. It's a mm. blank board. Um, yep. Later on uh, in the day when we're trying to line up with holes and then existing features Good on point. the board, um, that's where it's going to be really important that we're getting a uh, really accurate height map. Definitely. Definitely. Um, yeah, so the, um, we're just doing the, and, and worth noting, the way that we probe when working with the machine, um, it, I mean, this may seem really obvious, uh, but we only probe the things that we're going to be working with. Um, so when you, I mean, if you take a look at the software, you can see it has all the traces, but we're not probing any of those spots because we don't care about them for this step. Um, you only probe the stuff that you're gonna deal with. And that's important to think about when you're designing your file. Um, so sometimes, uh, you know, in support, I'm sure you see this uh, every now and then, where someone will send you a file and it's got extraneous data in the Gerber. Give me that look, I, I know that, I know that look. Um, and, uh, you know, 
they they don't understand why they're having this problem. Like it says it's too big for the print area yeah. or, you know, it's probing off the board and it's because they've got like the name of their file in the bottom corner and it's like, yeah, the software, whatever it loads, it thinks it's working with that. And, you know, that's something to be aware of whenever you're designing a file. Um, one of the big things that, that I've learned, um, I really got to thank uh, uh, James, one of our founders, um, and one of the things that he really taught me was um, to, to have a mindset for, for a DFM, Design for Manufacture. Right. Um, and it's one of those things that when, when you, you have a computer and you can just sort of go and design whatever you want, you feel really free to just like do something really crazy, and then you get to the point where you try to make it and you realize this would have been a lot easier if I just thought about these steps ahead of time. And, and that's sort of similar to this, you know, I'm using all the same size holes, right? Something really simple, but it means one less tool change, things go faster, there's no real downside to it. So there are a lot of these little things that are, are, are important to think about whenever you're designing a, a yeah. product. Yeah, or just a fewer chances for error. For, totally. For human error, for machine error. To, to uh, I, don't, I don't make human errors. So <laughs> come on. Yeah. <sighs> Super exciting probing. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 But it's looking good so far. It is. Which is nice. I mean, <laughs> I, it, I'm, I would be very upset if, if we were, if you we know. Had problems at this Yeah, stage, four minutes bad, into yeah. the initial probe <laughs> and there was a problem, then the, this is going to go downhill really hard, yeah, it'll really fast. Yeah, be a fast. long day. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But I think we're going to be fine. I suspect that realistically, the, the, the most likely place that we're going to hit a snag is after we've done rivets and yep. and we need to probe, um, and that that's something like and, and in fact uh, even with the uh, the pre-done boards that we have, um, I, I prepped a couple that have the rivets. They're basically ready to be populated. Um, we may actually I haven't I haven't actually tried probing them, so we may actually run into issues probing those, which I kind of hope we do honestly. Yeah. Um, because there are a couple of little ways that we can get around that, and if I can if we can show, hey, this is what happens when you get the like height error. Here's how to get around that, um, because oftentimes it's actually a really simple fix. Yeah. So yeah, and, and I think that's a, a really like great demonstration that like the V1 is a prototyping machine. Yes, it's not a production machine, so like totally. you are going to run into things, you're going to run into snags here mm -hmm. and there, and there are ways to fix them. There's ways to, to get you back up and running, but totally. um, yeah, it's just part of the process. You're you're prototyping, you're iterating. Um, you might need to make a small design change to to, to fit your use case. So, yeah, yeah, totally. It's all part of it. Totally. All right. Um, I guess actually, um, while that's happening, do you want to? I mean, we're, we're going to switch. You want to switch it to the thing, and I can show the. Where is my? Going to load up the drill with the drill bit. Yeah, yeah. I might as well get that prepped because. Where's my? Allen key. Oh, attack. actually, no. I want my good screwdriver. Oh yeah. This is my lucky one. My dad got it for me a long, 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 long time ago, um, and it has like a zillion bits. I only have one bit because I only need one today. Uh, but yeah, we're using the one and a half millimeter drill bit, right? It's one and a half. Or, technically, it's one point six, but it's fine. it's fine. Yeah, we just we leave a little bit of wiggle room for yeah. the one and a half. <laughs> totally worth it. Totally, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm happy to yeah. have it. All right, so yeah, we've probed. Uh, everything's fine. Uh, I can take the probe off, uh, put the drill on, and we have our power cable over here. bit of a stretch, but it'll be fine. Everybody can hear this delightful little chime. If I can plug it in. Okay. Nice. I love it. All right. So um, after we've probed, it's going to ask us what size holes. Um, the software will detect. Um, I mean, it just looks at the aperture size for any of the holes, and it can see that we've got two hole sizes. The 0.41 millimeter, those are the fiducials. Um, we're not drilling those. We don't care about those. That's fine. Um, so we're going to do uh, 1.5. You can see it selects these automatically. That's great. Um, yeah, I know. Uh, and then we are going to drill. Oh, and actually one thing I'm going to do, um, just I always like to be a little cautious. I am going to increase my drill depth. The default is 2 millimeters. Um, I like to set to 2.2 uh, for this board. Uh, I find that um, with the, the larger bit, sometimes you, it, it often has a little bit more trouble, not trouble getting through, yeah, but like... it's almost got a little bit of a chamfer on the top yeah, of the bit, exactly. so it doesn't go, f like, doesn't give you a full 1.6 yeah, millimeter all the way through, so, yeah, making this small adjustment will make sure that, yeah, yeah. the hole is uniform the whole way through. Beauty. All right, um, and then we're going to start. Uh, 
So it's going to measure the thing. I'm just going to sit back slightly. because This is where we're supposed to be wearing safety glasses. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't going to say it out loud, yeah. but yeah. We'll use our safety squints today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so ready for James to just run in the room and like... Safety glasses, yeah. <laughs> now we've got our emergency stop button if anything goes wrong. Uh, and with the drill, the emergency stop button is just take the drill off the machine, so... That's not, that's not that what that is at all. <laughs> just, yeah, just grab the, the spinning dangerous thing. Totally. But it'll be fine. Usually the only time I see any issues with drill or the drill bits breaking is when it's doing the XY calibration, if a switch is oh, broken really? and that kind of thing. That's I, really the only time there I, I see that there's any danger. So. I like I don't know if I've ever seen a bit break. Which like I mean I'm I mean I've seen other like if I'm just saying on the on the V one, like I've yeah. I've done a lot of drilling and I don't think I've ever actually Well yeah. oh, I like, haven't seen one personally, but I've just seen some customer videos. Oh sure, sure, sure. Kind of thing. Yeah, I know I'm out of frame because it's drilling. I'm keeping. Wow. Okay. So apparently our, our producer doesn't care about my safety <laughs> and is far more concerned about me being in the shot. So hello. Welcome to my inevitable demise. Here for you live. Tonight at 10. Yeah. The great thing about drilling is, is it is quick. <laughs> yes. Beautiful. I mean, it sort of depends, though. Like, I mean, drill, like, drilling is fairly quick, but, I mean, I, so when I, I actually, this is the second revision of this board that I made. Um, the first one, I can't remember how many vias I had total, like, uh, well, vias and through holes. It was, like, 40 or 50 or something wow, like that yeah. when I originally did it. And after making, like, three of those boards, I said, I really need to try this again. And, uh, yeah, I reduced it down, and we, I think it's, like, 20 or something like that total. Uh, maybe not even. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm quite quite pleased to not have nearly well, as many. Well, that's rows. a great example of designing for, yeah, yeah. for manufacturing. Right? Totally, like you have to rivet every one of those holes or, or fill every one of those vias. So yep. uh, the, the fewer you can have of those, um, yeah, it's just going to be a yeah. more accurate, easier to reproduce design. Totally, 100p as we say. We've got uh, chat. Uh, talking about your luscious locks. Yes. Yeah. That's all I wanted. I assume they're not talking about mine. So. Okay. Uh, interesting. We got an error. Nice. Okay. Did we? Yep. I did it. I did it. Um, okay. The real question is yes. So. Oh, that's unexpected. What What happened, Mike? Well, so this is this is my unit. I this this is a unit that is is very well used, well loved. Um, I use it all the time. I sort of insisted on using my own unit because, like, I don't know. I just I know my unit. It's your um, baby. Yeah. It's my baby. Um, and I actually had. Uh, it looks like we had a disconnect on the drill, um, which is the first time I've actually had this on my unit. And it looks like one of the pogo pins actually was slightly stuck. Um, so when I pulled it off, the the third pin, it was actually still in. So I just wiggled it and away we go. Uh, yep, I'm glad about that. Um, okay, so let me just double check because I think we actually have drilled everything. I think it did finish. Um, that said, I suppose there's no harm in just running it again real quick, just yeah, to be just safe. Because sure, yeah. like, I really don't want to print and then suddenly realize, although technically, so I guess one thing um, worth noting is we, um, as recommended, is the normal procedure for this is to um, drill first, then print. Uh, and the main reason for that is the concern about having uh, cured ink tear out uh, when, when you're drilling it. Um, you, you can drill through cured ink, absolutely. Um, that's a thing that, that can happen. Uh, but there is that concern. Um, in the event that we decided to go ahead and print it, we technically could, you know, if we printed it and realized, oh, we missed a hole, we could put it back on, reprobe it, and do the thing. Um, it would just take us a while. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. But I think we did get all the holes. But, um, yeah, that's actually interesting. Because one thing um, that's actually something we, is worth sort of considering is that um, in... 
normally, and we'll see this later when we do the print, um, if a print stops or fails or what have you, you'll note that the traces in the software, anything that has already been done yep. will stop, will not be highlighted anymore, will go blue. Yeah. Um, but that didn't happen here. Not uh, with the holes. Not yeah. with the holes. Yeah. Um, and like you say, this, this, is a, this is a first for me. I've not had this happen, but that would actually be, like that would be useful Great here. Great like, yeah. Oh, look, oh, these absolutely. ones drilled and then, so yeah. software. Peter, take note. Get on it. Yeah. This is <laughs> uh, cool. I've totally messed up your laptop. That's all right. It's completely covered in dust. Yeah, nothing a can of air can't fix. I guess. Yeah. Man, it's so rough. Yeah. I mean, we could have manually counted and cross-referenced to the to the board and. Yeah, but we're, we're, we're lazy. A, if we were missing a couple, we probably could have. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. Selected it. You know and that's done smart. It. But that's that smart. counting probably would have taken just as long as redrilling. That's fair. I mean, it totally would have. Yeah. And yeah, no, it just yeah. Not, and now we're just going to get the holes extra clean. Yeah. There's not much dust coming out, which is a good sign. It means <laughs> yeah, we're, we're in the yeah. same spot, but it's probably just cleaning out any of the dust that was just yeah. hidden inside. Yep. Fifteen seconds. We're getting there. We've got uh, chat talking about our uh, top-notch beards now. Yes. Yeah. Man, I worked so hard on this last night. I was like, I got to show up because, because Nathan always has the best beard. Like when I, I, I like first met him, I was like, do you, do you like oil? Do you like what? What do you do? And he's like, oh no, I just whatever. Shampoo. Apparently. Shampoo. Um, and uh, yeah, so I, I was like, I, I can't. I, I mean, obviously, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna win that competition, but. I wanted to show up and be. You're showing up. Yeah, yeah I want to show yeah. up, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. We're drilled. We did it. Stream over, everybody. Um, so we. I got to unscrew it. Um, after we drill, um, I'm not just going to take it off. We Technically, we could just print. Um, one of the features of the software is such that we can reuse the alignment that we previously had when uh, printing. Uh, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, and in fact, it's very convenient. Um, but I'm going, I'm sort of doing all the things today. So one of the things that I like to do is to take the sacrificial layer off uh, simply because there is always the possibility that that can introduce some height variance and whatnot. Um, it's yeah. pretty unlikely. And especially with a board this small, it's really not a problem. But I mean, we're trying to show the machine doing all the things. So we're going to do all the things. And it takes two seconds, so. Now, you, now you're making me feel like i got to rush. Two seconds. Oh. <laughs> so just climbing it down again, of course. Bup, bup, bup. Uh, one thing to remember as well, uh, when you're clamping, you don't, you don't need to like over tighten. That's actually a common thing. If, if you put too much force, you can actually bow your board a little bit. Um, and that's not good. Yeah, we're not doing any milling. We don't need to uh, yeah. hold the board super secure. Uh, it's, yeah, just to keep it from shifting around yep. uh, during the process of printing. Um, yep. Finger tights, plenty, plenty strong for that. Yeah. And like the, um, uh, keep in mind that like the only time we're really touching the board um, is with the probe. Like once you're printing, you're, you're really just like running ink over it. And like, yeah, it's, it's touching it, but like not you're, not, you're not exerting any force on it really. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, clean up. We can go back. Yes, we're done. Okay, nice. beautiful. I know, skipping through all the things. So now we're on the print step. And we're going to do an align print, of course. Uh, I believe. Yeah, what ink are we using? I think we're using Dynamic Dolphin. Um, let's see. I'm exceptionally lazy. So what I actually do is I generally don't, I, I don't look at the name because I don't have it immediately. I just look at the date. Yeah. Um, so the date is in the little thing. Um, so yes, yeah, Dynamic Dolphin. All right, so we want our front layer. Da, da, da. And then very importantly, we also want the holes layer. Um, this is something that sometimes users get stuck on because they're like, oh, I'm not printing holes. I already did the holes part. But it's really important that the printer knows where the holes are so it knows where not to print. And more importantly, where not to probe. Um, if it thinks it's a solid circular pad, it's going to probe in there, and then you're going to have a height issue, and you're not going to be able to print because you're going to crash your nozzle if you try it. Um, so we're doing line prints. 
Uh, and then here's where it asks if I want to reuse alignment. Obviously, I don't want to reuse alignment because I took the board off and remounted it. Um, but if we had just left it in place, we potentially could have. Um, so I'm going to realign. Um, now, for this alignment, I'm actually going to use um, the holes that I previously made um, rather than using whoops, uh, rather than using the uh, fiducials that are on the board. So in this step, you can always click on any feature. Like technically, I could, I could use this pad. Now, of course, the pad doesn't exist, so it's a really bad choice. Uh, but the holes do exist. So I'm going to take this hole right here, and I'm going to move to feature. And this is what I'm going to align to. Um, and I find that these, uh, um, you know, uh, 1.6 millimeter holes are actually really good for the probe. Like, the probe sits in them really nicely. Yeah. And you can sort of, if it falls in, you can really center it. So you just see that ring around it, and it, it becomes very visibly centered. Um, at least I find it works that way. But again, whatever works for you, do that. Yeah. And another thing is um, people might be concerned, oh, if it's probing in the hole, mm. it might be getting a height map below the hole, but we're not doing height map here. We're literally just doing alignment, so yep. there's nothing to worry about there. That's a very good point, yes. We do get that question every now and then. Um, yep, and that's, it. we're just doing alignment. Um, you don't want to fall into a hole while you're probing, but other than that, and actually technically, you could fall in a hole while probing. We do do a little bit of extra work um, during the probe step uh, when it comes to holes, uh, where we actually will probe we'll do several points around the hole. And what we actually will do is, in the event that you, know, um, you have you know, four points that are good and then one point that's really, really low, we actually just drop that point. We just ignore it completely, yeah. um, assuming that we have fallen in, and then instead use the other points that, that were measured, um, which is actually a pretty good way. Um, because, I mean, of course, I'm, I'm aligning this by eye. Um, it, I, you can get it really, really close, um, as you guys will see when, when we get to printing and whatnot. Um, but, you know, you're not, you're not going to be like crazy, crazy, crazy accurate. <laughs> I mean, maybe you will be, but. Yeah. Another thing is after you hit the lower button, mm. um, you can still use the arrow keys, uh, and it's a really fine, fine adjustment. Um, yep. So that's, that's the great way. So get it, get it uh, when it's raised up. Get in the ballpark with the arrow keys, and then lower it, and then you'll be able to really fine tune. Um, can we show the camera, like the main, on the on the? Show? Oh, we can see yeah, it. It's, Sorry. Yeah. It's, yep. it's, um, yeah. So yeah, you, I don't know if uh, if you guys caught that, but I so I did. I moved to the second feature, and I just said lower, and it actually fell right into the hole. So uh, it looks like my board was already pretty square, and I'm actually just making a, a quick little fine adjustment to make sure that it's sort of in the center of that hole. Uh, but that that's that's actually a really good sign. Like things are where they expect it to be. Um, and actually, I'll, I'll show you a quick, uh, after I measure this one, uh, I'll take one step back. With, there, you will definitely get a feel for probing and, and aligning and stuff. Like, there's definitely sort of getting a feel for how, how much a step is and how things work. Um, so once we get to, so we're in the next step, we're in, we're in our, our uh, confirm alignment, and this is actually really, really useful. Um, so now I can actually click on any feature on the board, and the probe will try and drop on it. So I'm just going to pick a random hole, assuming that this falls directly in the hole. Yeah, and um, this, is, this is really great, especially when you've got multiple size holes, to make mm -hmm. sure that um, no issues with, with alignment uh, happen while drilling. Sure. Um, because sometimes that can happen when you're changing out the bit to a smaller bit. Things might shift a little bit. Sure. Um, so yeah, this is a great way to check that. Yeah, everything's looking good. Yep. And and again, uh, trying to pick things that are really far apart because of course, like there there are issues sometimes where uh, if you have a scaling issue or something, right, where one side of the board is really good, but it's actually slightly out of scale. So the the one sort of good corner is is good, and then as you get out, things things are out of alignment. So you want to make sure you sort of hit that perimeter um, and do things that are far apart. But yeah, this board looks great. I mean, I've printed this one a, a bunch of times, so I, I know that it should work. Um, I'd be very concerned if it didn't. And then we're going to probe it. Um, and so you'll see uh, these are all the probing points. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? Just real quick, because, I mean, we're doing this big, long stream. We're going to teach everybody all the things. Um, I just want to show you guys just sort of a more visual illustration of that um, uh, probing pitch thing. Uh, so good idea. probe pitch, default 5, that's what I'm using here. But if I set it to 2.5 and I save it, we're going to generate, you can see now we've got way more dense probing points. We've got, we're Absolutely. getting way more data. Um, and again, that's always good. It means that, that you're going to be, we're going to be able to make like sm smaller adjustments between points and un understand the height of the board better. Um, but for this one, um, I'm just going to do five because, you know, I don't want to take up too much time. And it, it'll be fine for the top of the board at the very least. So Absolutely. Here we go. Three minutes and 30 seconds. So, yeah. Um, 
so th this this project, um, I mean, it was it's something that I've actually really wanted to do uh, for quite some time. Like when I when I first started at Volterra, um, I remember thinking about like all the cool things that that people could do with with something like the V1. And uh, I mean, for me, one of the big things is is being able to make development or like design accessible. Like yeah. that to me is like really really totally. important. Um, I remember like. I, a really dumb thing. I, I remember in my in my interview, I, I I described it as like this is sort of the first step in that in in the sort of the Star Trek um, replicator thing, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I I want us to get to that point. Like, here's here's like the the beginnings of being able to just like have something and you're like, I want to make this. So I, I think that's really cool. And so I, I thought about all these different sort of projects, and I, and I really like projects that are sort of engaging and do something that is sort of more functional. Like one of the one of the I don't want to call it a complaint, um, but like one of the things that, that people are often like, well, you guys print the Hello World a lot. And it's like, well, yeah, because the Hello World is a really great illustration of how it works, gets people to grips with the machine, all that kind nice of stuff. Nice, simple like, project totally. for day one with the machine. Absolutely. Right? But of course, yeah, it's, it, it's just a thing that lights up LEDs. Like, it's, yeah. not, it's not like a thing. It's, I, I don't use that in my everyday life. I still have my Hello World that I printed. Yeah, it sits you know, on my desk. Yeah, yeah six yeah. years ago. But, you know, it, it, mm -hmm. it's, it is just sort of like a, a memorabilia piece. And so I really like these types of projects where it's like you, you can get something out of this, and it, it's something really cool. And and I mean technically, I, I, I mean we have the box that 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 I put together, and that like I the design works. Like I know it works. I've tested it. I've I've made my prototype box, um, and if I wanted to, like I could send this to production. Like yeah. I I could I could send this out, get these fabricated normally. Like I could start a little you know boutique pedal business. Making these things if I wanted to, which is awesome, and like, I, it would have been so much more frustrating. Like if I had, when I did the design, um, do I have? I mean, I do have. I know I have it right here. Um, are we on? Yeah, we are. Yeah. So I've got this bag here of I think it's nine boards, something like that, and these are just like all of the the prototypes that I did. Like, and these all had various issues, problems that I had, um, and. Many of these problems were my problems, were things that I didn't realize when I designed it. Um, and so like, I, I made these, these nine boards. Um, and uh, one of the big ones, and this was super frustrating. I got to give a, a really big shout out um, to, to my friend Aaron McMahon. I would not have been able to, to finish this project without his help. Um, this guy knows more about like amplifiers and that kind of stuff. He, I'm sure he's forgotten more about that than I will ever know. Like this guy <laughs> yeah. just, I, it was great. I, I, I was running into some trouble and I was like, hey, can, can, you, can you take a look at this? I don't, I'm scratching my head. And he just, he looked at it and immediately just understood all of it. Yeah. And just like, he's like, oh, test this, do this, blah, blah, blah. Like it, it, was, it was amazing, frankly. Um, anyway, so um, we, you know, we went through and we did some tests and he, he helped me like diagnose what the problem was. And <laughs> there was one thing that both of us missed until very late in the game. And it was actually, um, I get, yeah, we don't have it on the thing, it's fine. Um, in the design, there was one trace that I just missed. Like I just, I straight up missed. And it was, it was the one that goes right to the output of, oh, of the go. thing. Yeah. So like we were testing all the, the, the voltages everywhere. Everything was fine. Like it was getting power, input was working, like everything. And we just, it, nothing was coming out the other end. And I, I was pulling my hair, I couldn't figure it out. And yeah, it was just a dumb mistake. I just, in my design thing, I think it was that there was, there was a, an air wire in the CAD software and it just lined up perfectly with something else. So it just was on top of it. I just didn't see it. Yeah. And foolishly, I didn't do like a, a design rule check and say, hey, like, is Always everything your design? Right? Checks. Like, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. check your things. <laughs> um, so that, yeah, that was my mistake. Um, and, but yeah, but it was one of those things where I got to, I got to fail and make that mistake and find it out here. And I was, you know, a day or two, and, and I've, I've got a, a now working board. Whereas, you know, if I'd outsourced it and had the boards come in, I would have spent a bunch of money, had them come in, had these problems, and just wasted a lot of time and money on a really dumb problem. Yeah. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was just a, it's a really cool thing that, that I, I was able to do it that way. Uh, all right, we may need to, I'm, right now I'm just uh, priming our uh, ink, because we are about to print. I guess I can go. I had a couple steps. It says mount the probe. Yes, we're gonna prime. Um, priming is super important, and this is one of the things that um, you know. Back back when I was was doing support, I 
the, the I would argue the most valuable uh, bit of like advice I could give a user is spend as much time as you need on the priming step. And then spend a bit more time. And uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> and then spend a bit more time. Because at the end of the day, like getting a good calibration pattern is going to be the difference between a good print and a bad print. Yeah, and, and it affects so many things like yeah. the, the traces curing property and, and adhering properly. Sure. Uh, solderability later on. So, totally. Um, yeah, getting really good traces is, is worth its weight in gold. So, Absolutely. Well, I guess worth its weight in silver in this case. Nice, so, yeah. nice, yeah. nice. Man, this guy's so clever. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, I, I and, and the thing is, like, obviously, if you, you know, if you can get a really good, um, I got some junk in my X, Y position here. Um, if you, if you get a really good one off the bat, that's great. Um, but don't expect that, especially when you're first starting. Um, this, the, there's, I, I, if you have a piece of equipment, of, of like lab equipment or like development equipment that, you know, you took out of the box and you didn't have to learn anything about it, I'm all ears. Like, let, let me know because I'm right? really curious. Yeah. I like, <laughs> I would love to, to talk to those people and learn how they were able to do that because like, this is a, a, a new type of thing. It's, it's, yeah, it's similar to how 3D printers work and all that stuff, but everything is ever so slightly different, and that makes up the difference. It makes it really tricky to make sure that everything is, like, just so. Um, so there is going to be a learning curve, and, and learning what a good calibration pattern looks like. Like, this is actually a really good calibration. Um, I'm going to adjust it slightly. Um, one thing worth noting as well, um, so the calibration pattern um, is uh, wavy lines and then, and then horizontal lines above it. The wavy lines exist pretty functionally so that you can adjust on the fly. So when we run commands on the V1, um, we will, we will you know, give code to the V1 to say, do this motion, do this movement, do this action. And it will execute that and you can't make changes until the next action. We sort of insert them in between. And so the thing is, with the, the horizontal lines above, if you're printing, if you're halfway through that line, you want to change the height or change the E value or what have you, yeah. it won't do that until it finishes and starts the next line. The nice thing about the wavy lines is that they're made up of a ton of little tiny line segments, so you can actually make those changes. And technically, it's not happening in real time, but it's so close. because it's, it's close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it functionally... From, from the user's perspective, it is happening in real time. And that way you can make those adjustments on those wavy lines so that when you get to the horizontal lines, you're, you're good to go. Um, so like I say, this one was pretty good. Um, I think I might actually increase, I, I kind of want to increase the height a little bit. Um, and this is just, this is something that just comes from experience. Um, I probably am not going to though. Uh, I just have this, I always have this sort of urge to increase the height because one thing that, and, and I, mean, I mean Matt, um, he had to like beat this into my head because like he used to do all of our like material stuff and our ink testing and, and like figuring all that stuff out and I'd have a problem and I'd say I, I think I think I'm printing too high I think I need to lower it and he's like no you need to raise it and and like intuitively I feel like I need to lower it because it doesn't it it just looks like it needs to be lowered and he you say no no you got you got to raise it you got to raise it yeah it's it's almost like you think it's going to smush into the board better and you're going to get better adherence but all it's going to do is restrict the flow and you're yeah. not going to get anything coming out exactly so raising it because we're we're doing positive displacement here so it means we're leaving enough space for the ink to drop onto the board basically so if there's yeah. not enough space then yeah you're not going to get that really nice uniform looking line yeah um, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 we, yeah. We've got really good uh, picture examples in the top corner of the software. Mm -hmm. We've also got some guides online with this, and also our support team's happy anytime to yeah. uh, to give feedback on, on any of the calibration patterns you're doing. So totally. Um, yeah, if it's something you're having a hard time with, reach out to us because yeah, we'd be happy to, to dig in with you. And and I mean, and don't don't also don't think that like our technical support team is there if you, like you don't have to be having like a technical support problem, right? Like if you're just unsure, like if, if you, you want to say, hey, is this print good? Like, yeah, it's not really a technical thing, but absolutely send us a picture. We're happy to take a look. We're happy to advise. Um, we have a lot of experience with how to do this. Um, so you're probably not going to get better feedback anywhere else. Um, and we want you guys to be successful with this um, because it's, it's, it's fun, it's cool, it, it it's, can be a really useful tool. You just got to know how to use it and, you know, you have to work within its limitations as with any tool. Um, but we're, we're here to make sure that you can do that and that your project can be successful. Um, 
which is, like I say, why we're doing some things that are a little bit outside, like the we're going to be doing uh, rivetless vias, right? Like that's not unofficially supported. Like that's not a thing that we we recommend. But I get a lot of users asking about it, and like technically it's doable. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, I I like it for some things. Um, I find it actually it can be useful, um, and and. We actually used to do that way, way in a long, long ago, like pre rivets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we we developed a drill and and we didn't really know how to do vias at the time, so we we just filled our our vias and and we cured it that way, and like that was the process, um, and it worked pretty well. We actually have I don't I don't know if it's still up, um, but we used to have there was a picture of a, a board on the website. Um, and it was this uh, a two by three board, and it had these uh, like blue screw terminals, and then like a big square white button in the middle with a, a little uh, red LED. And that was actually a board I designed. That was probably the well, maybe that was the second actual project I ever did with the V1. Um, and that was actually a board for uh, my arcade cabinet um, at home. Right. Um, and so that that was a, a little a little board that goes in the in the machine like to controller switcher or yeah 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 exactly like yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. yeah so I could switch the player one and player two joysticks um, and uh, that one um, was up on our site we used to have pictures of it I, they might still be up there um, but yeah that was up there for ages and it, it's all um, rivetless yeah um, none of it we didn't have rivets at the time um, so like it, yeah it, it can work um, it's not a problem you do have to test it the other thing actually I should mention one of the, the other reasons for doing all the same size holes is if if we, uh, like we're going to do some, some uh, rivetless vias, but it is possible that they'll fail. Like, yeah. that, it could happen. And the nice thing is, if, if all our holes are the same size, like if we fill it with, with ink and it doesn't conduct, if it's not proper, we can just pop it out and then put a rivet in and yeah. away we go. Like, it, it, it's actually a really simple solution to, to fix that. Um, I have actually experimented a little bit with actually filling um, with using, using ink um, to, to actually fix a, a rivet, oh, sorry, a, 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 a rivetless via, um, and hitting with a hot air gun. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, I actually have. Uh, there's actually a couple boards in here that um, it was actually it was really brutal. I was uh, I was putting I was assembling the board, um, and I mean always you want to be cautious when assembling a board. And I was uh, I was putting on. I think I was doing the very last. Um, bit uh, uh, the diode that sits on top that, that lights up, right. and I was I was soldering it by hand, and I just slipped, and I like scratched the board with my iron, like hot iron across the thing, and I just like ripped a trace off, right? Not great. Nope. Nope. Because I and I like finished everything else. It was populated, like everything was connected. I had tested it, like I had plugged it in. I just didn't have the diode on because I was like, oh, I don't care about if the lights on. I'll be able to see if it's working, and I messed it up, and I was thinking like what do I do? Like, I've got components on it. I can't mount it and, like, reprint. Right. Um, and so I was like, hey, let's, let's give this a shot. So I actually, I took some ink and I just, like, dispensed it along that line and just, I set my air gun, my hot air gun to, like, 250 degrees and just held it there for, like, four minutes. And I, I didn't check the resistivity or anything. Like, I, it's probably, it's not, it's not going to be a good connection, but, like, it connected it, and yeah, I but moved it, on. yeah, if it if it if it helps get you to the next stage of your prototyping, yeah. then yeah, it's a good quick fix. Uh, yeah. yeah, and that's that's the thing, and I think it's it's important to 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 sort of look at the projects in that sort of framework of like we we want to get it done. Like this this it's a prototyping machine, right? Like your prototypes don't have to be pretty; they got to work. Um, that's really the the main thing. So yeah, I got it working, and and in fact, I think that it might actually be that one. Mm -hmm. Um, it might, that might be the, the one, so. Our proof of concept, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so. Nice. Uh, one other call out I just want to make right now. Yeah. Uh, obviously, we're printing. Yep. Uh, next step's going to be baking. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be hanging out while it bakes. Yeah. Um, great chance for anybody who has questions. Mm -hmm. Just pop them in the chat. Definitely. Uh, and yeah, we'll, we'll have plenty of time over the bake. Any questions you have, we'll, we'll try and address them then if we can. So, um, yeah, we've got about, yeah, eight or nine minutes still of printing. Yep. But yeah, that's coming up. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. Hmm. But yeah, this print's actually like, I, yeah, I, it, it's, it's kind of ridiculous um, how, like, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've been at Voltaire for a long, long time. Um, I think it was like six and a half years, something like that. Um, and I remember when it was just like a couple of us 
um, in a little little incubator, like trying to get all the things working, and you know Matt trying to sort out ink issues and like you know doing all this testing and whatnot. And um, it's it's still like watching it print. It's still kind of magical, but it's like it's mesmerizing, yeah. right? It I've seen it a zillion times, but like it just all the lines are right where you want them to be. This is nice and and like and our, our the the ink that we're using now, like this is the 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 like the newer conductor, like newer. Um, I mean, we've we've been using this this new conductor for I don't even know, like it's got to be like four years, something like that. But it's still in my head, it's the new stuff because I remember the old stuff and the old stuff. Um, we we had issues with like leakage. It was thinner, like we had problems like that, and you'd have issues with spread and like looking at this stuff just print and it's just like crisp and nice. Um, although worth noting that. Like with every with every like benefit, there's potentially a drawback, and that's actually what we're gonna we're gonna see that a little bit later when we do the rivetless vias. Yeah. Um, because when you're filling a hole, having a more liquid or like a like a, a less thick material is gonna be much easier because it's just gonna like fill that volume. Um, but there is a trick you can totally do with this. It's just a there's a little bit more thought to it um, because it's a little bit thicker. But I will totally take that. Um, and have really crisp prints every day than super runny ink that I have to fight with all the time. Yeah. So we've got a question in chat. Yeah. Uh, how long do the conductive ink cartridges last? I mean, that's a great question. It, it, so, um, I mean, the in terms of like how long they last just sort of sitting on a shelf, um, I... As I recall, is it six months or is it? Is it a year? I think it's about eight months. Is it eight months um, now? Okay. Yeah, I, I know some of our solder paste is up to a year. Okay. As well, so gotcha. it depends on the material as well. Uh, all of them have a use by date on. Yeah, them. of course, absolutely. Um, and that is, yeah, just sitting on the shelf. Um, and you want to be properly storing as well. Mm -hmm. um, so when you're not using it, uh, making sure it's capped off yep. uh, in the fridge between four to ten degrees Celsius. That's going to be your. That's your on best the label bet. too. Uh, that's also on the label. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you're just leaving it out uh, and it's open, um, yeah, it's going to dry out and you might get a clog and you, yeah, you're going to have to change your nozzle. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing is, is, is the, if, if you let it sit and the, the nozzles have issues. We, with the, the ink, I mean, generally, I, like this one, yeah, this one's going to, in theory, expire at the beginning of 2023. Yeah. Um, and, uh, I, you know, I always recommend to users, if they have an ink that is expired, like, give it a shot. Um, I've seen inks that were pretty well past the date that still work, but admittedly still stuff that was at the date and, and, and didn't, didn't totally. do a good job because it, it, it does vary um, depending on, on where you are. In terms of like, uh, it, I, and I wasn't sure if the question was explicitly like how long does it last on a shelf or like how much can you get out of it. That's the other thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, that, and obviously it's going to depend on the board. So I think that we, like, we did the math once for if you were just printing Hello World and it was something like 80 or 90. 80 Hello World. Yeah, yeah, or something, something like, like that. that yeah. um, which that seems pretty reasonable. Um, and it, it really is going to depend on the complexity of the board, how, how much ink you're using. And one thing to, to keep in mind, um, a lot of users uh, are used to, and, and this sort of goes back to that DFM thing, is a lot of users are used to having um, uh, uh, planes, uh, pores, solid pores. Yeah. And of course, if you have a solid, a big giant solid pore, you're going to use a lot of ink for that. And you, like, first off, you don't want to waste ink like that. That is a, that is a waste of ink, straight up. Um, you want to convert that to a hatched plane, so it's just a bunch of lines. You're going to save a ton of ink, you're going to save a ton of time, and you're going to save a ton of headache. Because as soon as you start like pooling material like that, like you, technically you can do it, but you, there's no benefit, like yeah. none. Yeah, and it'll just uh, take forever. Yeah, and you're just going to waste things. So there, there are also little things that you can do there as well to, to sort of uh, uh, figure out wh how to sort of maximize your, your ink. Um, and, and little things. Like, for example, on the, on the bottom of this, I'm going to waste a little bit of ink because I, like, I, this is, this, like I said, this is based on an existing pedal design. Um, but I, I wanted to sort of give it a name, I guess, if, if you will. Um, and, but I'm not, not being a musician. I just call it the VTS distortion because it's got volume, tone, and sustain. Those are the three dials on it. Yeah. So on the bottom of the board, I actually have, it says VTS distortion, right? Um, and that's just to identify it. And yeah, it's a bit of a waste of ink. It's not necessary. Um, and, and, and in the same way, like you can actually see um, one of the questions that we get sometimes is doing silkscreen. Um, right. Because of course, that's really useful. And um, 
what I, what we generally do is you you can actually see I, I don't know if we're I think we're, we can see the board here. Um, you can see I've got the volume, the the tone, the sustain written on the board in ink. Like obviously it does mean that you want to be careful about where you place it, so you're not like uh, shorting out traces and whatnot. But again, DFM design for the the tool you're going to use and use that tool appropriately, and you're going to have a good time. So yeah, I uh, that that's what we do generally. I mean, obviously I'm not putting down like the um, the the numbers for all of the parts like D3, C5, like all that stuff. I'm not too worried about that because when I assemble it, I'm going to be opening up my CAD software and then using that as reference. Yeah. Um, but again, you 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 can make it work the way you want it to work. You if if you design your board, you really want to have all those little uh, names and numbers out there. You can do it. You just got to make yourself a little bit yeah. of space. Yeah, yeah. If, if you've got the space for it, fine, fair enough. But if yeah, if you want to keep your board compact. Hmm. No need either. I think we have had a few users that have tried using um, uh, inks designed for uh, silk screening um, and have been able to, to print. Like we, we've not really. I think we may have tried at some point, like played around with it, but I don't know much about like how that that developed. Uh, but I believe we actually do have a couple users that have had success doing that. Um, as with any like non Volterra material, obviously there's a lot of trial and error and figuring out like how it's going to work and whatnot. Yep. Um, but you know, use use your tool how you want to use it, and and we'll be there to help you as best we can. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've got another great question. I'm ready. Uh, is, uh, can I use other drill bits with the drill attachment? Yeah, um, I don't. You'll have to forgive me. I don't off the top of my head know the shank size of these guys. We've got the specs on our website. Do we? Okay. Um, just under the the Volterra specs page, there's a section for for drills there. But I think right. it has to be an inch and a half long. Uh, and then the yeah, shank yeah. size, I believe, is uh, an eighth inch shank size. Uh, and if you are purchasing, you just want to make sure they don't have a collar on them as well. Yeah. Because uh, that's just going to affect the height. But yeah, as long as you're, you've got the, the right length and the shank size, uh, should be good. And I think we, the drill is like rated to handle up to a three millimeter drill bit, I believe. Something like that, yeah. 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 And, um, and yeah, worth noting that the, the kits that we have on the store, they're 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1 millimeter, and 1.6 millimeter. So you actually do have several sizes. Um, though the, the, the main sizes we use for the rivets are the, the smallest, the 0.7, and the largest, the 1.6. But like I say, if you want to uh, employ this uh, sort of uh, filled rivets or filled vias without rivets thing, you could use any size you want. Yeah, yeah. We've got another great question on oh, hand yes. soldering, but um, oh, okay. we're definitely going to get to that later today when sure. we're adding components. So yep. uh, yeah, I, I think we'll just save some, some tips and tricks for that then. Yeah, and then I guess we've got one design-related question right now. Uh-oh. Uh, yeah. It's just how do you make sure your traces don't overlap or touch for integrated circuits? Or, sure. Yeah, when things are required to be close together. Totally, totally. So um, I, one of the things that, that a lot of, I mean, I, I, I'm not intimately familiar with every CAD tool for yeah. design. Um, there's just too many. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's too many. And like, I, I'm familiar with quite a few of them because we have a lot of different users. Back when I was doing support, I'd be helping them with like ORCAD, and I'd be helping them with, with Altium, and I'd be helping them with KiCad, and I'd be, whatever. Um, and um, all of these different softwares, generally, they're going to have some sort of built-in um, design rule specification. You can, you'll have some sort of error checking system. So you can usually uh, denote in, in the software and say, hey, I want to make sure that all of my traces are at least one millimeter apart, or whatever you want, like you, any number you want. Um, and uh, and then when you run that check, it will look and say, hey, these two lines aren't supposed to be touching, and they're touching. And it'll give you a warning. You can fix it. And that's, like I say, that's how I ended up finding that one uh, bad trace where I missed a trace. It wasn't that I overlapped one. Um, and generally, the other thing is with most design software, um, they generally won't let you, if you're using, most of them will have two tools. Uh, they'll have uh, like a trace tool where you're taking air wires, which are the lines that connect all the components, and you're drawing out the air wires. And then they'll also have like a line tool where you can just draw a line. If you're drawing a line, you can do whatever you want and just like overlap stuff and do anything. Generally, if you're using the, the one for air wires where you're drawing an actual trace, it yeah. won't let you overlap stuff based on whatever the setup is. So like exactly. if you try and like drag your line through something, it'll then automatically reroute however it has to to get to where you need to be. Um, and that actually sort of brings up another thing. Like a lot of, I, I, full disclosure, I am not a, you know, 40-year engineering veteran of, of electronics design. Okay, so absolutely take this with a grain of salt. I never recommend users use auto route. Many applications will have an auto route option 
where you know you place all your things and you click auto route and it's going to draw the lines to everything automatically for you and you can usually say oh i only want to have this many layers or don't have vias or do have via or whatever yeah um, and, and, and you click the little button and it's going to be like magic. And in my experience, it's absolutely trash. Yeah. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Even if it does work perfectly, yes, you've got that time savings. But sure. if you then need to troubleshoot anything, you have no idea what trace is going where. So, right? Yeah. Just, yeah. just do it by hand. No, that, that's uh, hugely... Pro and, and I guess the other thing with the design rule check is we've got all the specs uh, yes. on our support page Absolutely. of what the minimums you should use for your design rule checks as well. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just head over to the circuit design guidelines uh, yep. support page uh, and we've got everything you need there to, to plug into your software. Totally, right? totally. Um, so yeah, uh, you guys can see we got our print done. I'll hold it up for you guys so you can get a little better shot of it. But um, this is our, our guy. I don't know how well that, that's coming in, but... Um, it's super uh, pretty, probably. Yeah, super pretty. <laughs> I mean, yeah, we have a bit of a delay, so. Uh, but yeah, no, this one looks good. Um, I see no issues with it. Maybe uh, the big pads at the top, they didn't, like, they're fine. Um, they just have, like, a little sort of slit in them, but I'm not worried about it because it won't matter. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip around my uh, clamps. So they've got this little ledge. And now I'm going to... Um, oh, right. Uh, right, I'm using the bigger ones. Okay, that's fine. So, uh, technically, I know people like to clamp the um, the 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 clamps um, to 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 sit them down. I don't worry about it generally. Like, the, uh, if the thing gets knocked, it's going to be a bad time. So, like, it's not a bad idea to do it. But we've got this set up. No one's going to knock that thing unless Nathan does it. I'm not going to do it, and I'm, I'm not going to yeah. ruin this whole thing. Um, <laughs> And uh, yeah, so we're just gonna we're gonna go into the base step. So we've got the thing flipped. Um, it is important to flip over your your board uh, because of course the whole like FR material is 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 like heat resistant. Like that's a whole thing. So like if you have it face up, it's gonna insulate the ink from the heat. Not great. Uh, so we flip it over just enough so that the ink isn't touching the the surface. That's why we have the raised thing. You don't want the ink to touch the hot plate. Yeah. That's gonna be bad. Um, and it, then we'll it, al it also seems really close yes. to touching. But it's uh, not. But it's not. It's uh, not. Yeah, it's like totally our traces not. are like super thin. Yeah. Uh, and we've got like half a millimeter of space there. Yeah, yeah. So there, there, there's a room. So yeah, that, that's going to heat. That's going to bake. Um, and yeah, that's, that's going to take us a little bit of time. Um, uh, do we have any other like cool? Yeah, we've got a couple questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, just on, on file, file types. Um, yeah. What file types does the software accept? Oh, man, what a great question. Yeah. And I'm embarrassed to say I can't name all of the, like, at the just end of the day. Just in general, Gerbers. It's Gerbers. Yeah, yeah. It's 100% yeah. Gerbers. And now the, the thing is we look for explicit extensions on the Gerbers. So, like, obviously, if you got .gbr, you're good to go. Everything's great. You, you want to have Gerbers for everything. Um, and, uh, but one thing worth noting is that when loading a file, um, we will automatically flip a board uh, or flip the file depending on the extension. Because, of course, if you're printing the bottom of your board, you, you don't want it to be the same way up. You, you need it to be flipped because the board is flipped. Yeah. Um, so when we detect that you're using, if the, the extension is .gbr, it'll display normally. But if it's uh, .gbl, Gerber bottom layer, yeah. it will automatically flip. Um, and there are actually a couple other... Um, and those are on our circuits uh, yeah, design guidelines yep. page as well. Circuit so. design guidelines, it's all there. And then, and then for your drill file, you want to be using Exelon. Yeah, um, that's or, the key there. Yeah. Some people say Echelon. I'm pretty sure it's Exelon. I think it's Exelon. I think it's yeah. Exelon. Yeah. Um, but this, yeah. this room's on consen in consensus. Okay, it's cool. Awesome. Yes, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. <laughs> um, so, yeah, yeah. That, that, um, and that's, that's what you want for your drill file. Um, now, one thing to keep in mind, and this, this you may need to contact support. Um, we can totally help you with that. Um, is unfortunately, while we adhere to the Gerber standard, not every software also adheres to the Gerber standard. So, um, you know, I'm not going to call out any software companies out there who might be doing something that we don't want. But, um, for example, there have been a couple where what they do is they, they want to be more efficient. So one of, one of the problems that, that I would often see has to do with contours. Um, now, Honestly, I don't actually know why contour is the term used. I assume it's some sort of machining thing that is, you know. But um, 
oftentimes considered a, a, a polygon. That, that's, that's the way I describe it to users often, if they want to draw a polygon. And when you're drawing in using Gerber, um, what you'll do is you'll, you'll sort of take points and, and say you want to draw a square. You, you, know, you, you start at point one, you go to point two, you go to point three, you go to point four, and you go back to the start and you've drawn a square. Um, there are certain softwares that decide, hey, you know what we're going to do? We're going to assume that when you're done, you automatically go back to the origin. So they actually only draw the f one to two, two to three, and three to four. They don't go back. And that's explicitly opposed to the like, official Gerber standard. The Gerber standard requires that all contours be closed in order to like, do the thing. Um, so, I mean, long story short, there, you may run into issues where you try and load a file and it has some sort of problem, even though it is a Gerber file. And it's, it's, poss it's totally possible that our parser just messed up. That happens, absolutely. But it's also possible that the software you're using just decided to do their own thing and totally fly off the radar and you know, send us a file, come on in, we will be happy to look at it. Um, most times we can fix that, like, it's usually a snap. Um, and I think, we, I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's actually released yet, but there's, um, there's, we're, we're working on some features to try and actually automatically do that for you in the software. Um, I think that might be out, but uh, don't quote me on that. Um, I, I, I can see a very handsome gentleman who's entered the room. Yeah, we've got a special guest. How, uh, how special is this guest? Let's, let's, oh, I didn't uh, know it was a special guest. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's just got to watch the power bar to make sure oh, the yeah. stream oh. doesn't go down. Oh, no. <laughs> just like everything goes dark. That'd be well, great. I'm telling you, I got lightning in these fingers, so yeah. it might destroy everything. Uh, so this is Evan. Evan, what do you do here? What do I do here? What do you do here, Evan? <laughs> Absolutely here? everything. <laughs> Absolutely everything. Wow. Yeah, need to, uh, need to be a little more humble. What do I do here? Well, I am our hardware developer, which is a broad term that basically means I am the one who is developing uh, printed circuit boards for new products that we're working on, uh, as well as helping out with things like firmware, software, stuff like that, and also just the guy that people ask things about when I don't, it's like, how does, how does this circuit work? And I, don't like, mean, I don't mean to be that guy, but why would you be doing software and firmware if you're a hardware developer? That, yeah. those, those, that doesn't sound very hard. That's I mean, it sounds hard. Don't, <laughs> that sounds really hard. Don't get, yeah, but like... Why? Why do all those things? Hmm. You know, just because it's fun. Because it's just I know. Okay, so <laughs> I I bug Evan a lot actually. Mm. Um, Evan is is an absolute delight, and it's actually really fun to ask him questions because he'll end up sending you. He'll just take pictures of his textbooks from from university <laughs> and be like, here's here's thirty screenshots of this textbook that you should read right. about this tiny little detail about, you know diodes in this weird sequence I, for... I definitely am liable to uh, maybe not over-explain, but definitely provide resources. <laughs> maybe <laughs> not over-explain. Sure. Uh, yeah. Um, fine. You, That's fine. Yeah, I do remember one time when you asked me specifically about a certain circuit that was you were debugging, yeah. and then uh, you were like, how does this work? And I was like, oh, well, like, here's how a MOSFET transistor works. <laughs> I was super into it. No, it was, it was super helpful, and like, he's super good at explaining stuff. I super appreciate it. I absolutely adore having well, him on the team. I appreciate yeah. all the praise. <laughs> But, but I mean, but I never answer your question about software and firmware and all that other stuff. I yeah, realized. I was I was just gonna let it go because like. Oh well, <laughs> I mean we could let it go, but it's I I think I think. Let me get out a textbook that explains this. Yeah, let me actually uh, talk about engineering practice and uh, development, nice. and then I'll just read from it. You no. have the whiteboard if you want. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, we have a whiteboard. So, yes. So here's the software. Um, jokes aside, that's actually a good question, and I think a lot of people who are kind of new to um, at least modern. Uh, hardware development would ask the same thing. It's like, well, sure. we're just like working on the circuit board. Why do we need to be concerned with uh, firmware and code? And I mean, that's just the reality of modern development is everything, uh, not everything, but a lot of, right. you know, IoT applications, a lot of different things that have Bluetooth connectivity or connect to something or whatever um, has like an Arduino microcontroller in it or has a Raspberry Pi that it works to. So it's really important, I think, when you're in hardware to have at least a passing knowledge of, you know, how to code, um, but yeah. also like how your design interacts with, you know, microcontrollers, computers, stuff like that. So, sure. um, yeah, just kind of have your fingers in everything. I also happen to just love just learning, so. <laughs> I, I know that, and it's awesome. <laughs> I'm super into it. So, yeah, so I mean, um, I know I, I, I bugged you a little bit about this guy, um, but not a whole lot because you've been super busy on other fancy things. Ooh, secrets. Um, super secrets. Um, but, yeah, I mean, what do you, I mean, 
uh, you, you took a look. Like, what, what, what do you think about, about my <laughs> sweet design? Well, I walked in this morning, and I got to, after seeing the schematic and the design quite a few times, it's always, well, even after designing many boards. Oh, no, it's it, going to be like, oh, it's always great to see scrubs, like, yeah. just embarrass look, themselves. I need to feel good about myself somehow. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Uh, no, but just I, I just always need to say that like seeing a design for the first time, like mm. I think that's why I love one of the reasons I love hardware so much is just, like you see the design, mm. and it's all theoretical and all works, but then you see it in reality, and, totally. and that's why one of the things I mean I, I was listening a little bit to the live stream before I walked in, but that's one of the reasons I like the V1 so much is just seeing like things come into reality. Totally. Um, so that was my first impression, but yeah, I th I think. I don't know. I'm just amazed just by like the time we live in where it's just like there's this design online that was open source. You're sure. able to see it, modify it, and, and bring, bring it up to fruition. But it's also like not a super simple design. Like the, yeah. the fact that you're able to, and I hope later on we'll be able to hear a demo of it, but um, the fact that you're able to design or see a design online, modify it for your needs, and then build it using our tools. Um, and it has, I'm not musically inclined, I'm sorry guys. Um, but <laughs> Dude, you told me you're an excellent keyboard player. I did not you say excellent. You came in and you're just like, not... oh man. Oh. He knows the keyboard has keys. Yeah. I, I, the, there's the white ones and the black ones and then there's some other knobs. I was so it. ready for you to be like, oh yeah, it's got like ASDF, <laughs> WASD, yeah, it's my favorite keyboard. <laughs> I was worried there for a second. It's got a bunch of LED triggers. I, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I should have came in with uh, like sunglasses and pretended like I was from the 80s and like with my like big uh, Korg synth and be like, all right, let's, let's go. Were you, were you born? Uh, not in the <laughs> 80s, um, that's for sure. The facial hair is hiding my youth a little bit yeah. today, so. Yeah. Nice. Um, but yeah, it was super cool to see um, just the whole process, especially seeing you debug it and kind mm. of bring it up. It's been, yeah. Yeah, and, and one thing that was interesting is, like traditionally, well, I mean, Nathan probably actually knows more about this than I do, because like, he's actually a musician. Um, <laughs> dude, I'm super impressed. I love, I love talking to musicians. They're like the coolest people to chill with. Um, but one of the things is, is my understanding generally, when you take a look uh, at, at um, effects pedals and things like that, especially like boutique pedals, they're all using through-hole components. Like, it's all mm. like the old style, like the, I don't know, like, is there a better name? Like, the, like you know, like the resistor that, like, you know, yeah, totally. but, like, you're using yeah. the right language. But no, but do they have like a better, like, I feel like there should be like a, like a, like a warm, like, oh, it makes you feel good that it's so old. Like, it's like, well, they, they look handmade because they are. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I just meant like I feel like there should be a better term for those resistors, mm. They're just in through hole resistors. Like they should be like, yeah. I don't know, something something nice and I mean and we, rustic. You can you can start calling them like a bespoke or yes. rustic. Yes. Yes. Bespoke if you, if you resistors. Rust. Yes, but yeah. yes, rustic but, capacitors. Oh yeah. man. Yes. Okay, we found the market. Okay. okay. Are you I'm, kidding me? I'm glad we all came up this with is, this on this stream. No one's. Oh no! It, I promise. <laughs> Um, uh, but that's actually an interesting point, especially uh, in pedals as well as a lot of analog synthesizer stuff like that. Sure. Still use through-hole components for the most part. Mm. Um, I was going through did the design a few minutes ago just to yeah, refresh yeah. my mind on what the sure. design was like. And there are some parts in, uh, we won't go into it, but there's parts in the schematic that use like uh, newer technology as in technology from the 90s forward. Sure. <laughs> um, versus the rest of the design is using transistors that have been around since the 50s. Right. And I, I did a quick Google and like there was a heated debate online about like, he, did you use those parts as a cast code oh. amplifier? Oh, no, no. And right. like it's people, it's very interesting seeing in this application among other ones when mm. uh, people are just uh, comfortable with established design um, which again leaves room for prototyping, newer and, and cooler totally. and better. Maybe not as bespoke design, <laughs> right. but uh, yeah, it, it is very interesting. And a lot of these these circuit boards, even the ones that are produced at scale, um, like they don't look like new modern boards. They don't look right. like the right the forty five degree angle, all sure, that stuff. Sure. But like they look hand drawn, which everything was at a certain of course. point. So yeah, it's yeah. a very interesting point to bring up. We should call them bespoke, though. Yeah, I, I think love, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's 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 the, that's the name of the channel now. So it's, it's bespoke boards. Bespoke, bespoke boards. boards yeah. um, no, that, that's that's actually that's, that's really interesting. And one thing I'll, I'll be, I mean, I, I mean, I'm maybe I'm. I don't want to overplay your musical prowess too much. Yeah, I mean, just it, like yeah. it. I just uh, anyway. especially if we're doing a demo later. Yeah, it's gonna be good. <laughs> good. Um, uh, but one thing I'd be really curious. And I mean, obviously, it's it's difficult. Like, I mean, they're all different pedals and whatnot. But I'm always super super interested to talk to audiophiles. 
when, because you know, you know, they're like, oh, if you use this type of speaker, or like, oh, add this one resistor, and like, oh, it changes everything, and it's the bees me. You can hear the difference. Yeah, yeah I yeah. can hear right, and like people, when people talk, it's like, oh, I added, I changed the one tube in my tube amp to be like this slightly different model, and I can, oh, it's like, okay, fine, I, I don't, I don't not believe you. I can't hear it, and so I'm just really curious, like. The, the whole one of the one of the things that I wanted to do with this board was to sort of do every almost everything with um, a service mount components, right? Yeah. Um, because yeah, traditionally boards like this are all through hole, and I just I thought it would be kind of neat to do that. And I'm just curious, like you, I mean, you had you had a chance to play with it earlier, and like, would you would you use that in a show? Absolutely. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Man, that makes I me think feel good. The, like, He's just saying The that. thing with musicians is like they just want reliability. So right. like as long as the pedal is going to continue to work for me and it gives me the sound I want, sure. I'm happy to mm -hmm. use it. I love it. Uh, and that's like the really cool thing about this design. This design has more or less remained unchanged since the late 60s, sure. early 70s. Um, and like most bass fuzzes out there now are based off of this design. Right. And that's all they're doing is they're just tweaking a couple resistors here or there to make it their own. To, yep. to get the sound that they want, but totally. like it's it's basically the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, really cool that way. Yeah. No, that that's awesome. Hmm. So I don't know, like if chat has any questions for Evan, uh, oh. feel free to toss them in. Questions too. for me in particular. Uh, I mean, you can ask yeah. questions to anyone. But got, yeah, any of us. We got yeah, producer yeah. Shelly in here. Like, you have questions for her. I'm sure she'd be happy to answer something. Ask her about how like uh, white balancing works on on video. Like <laughs> that's something I'll never understand. Yep. Yeah. We don't need to get into. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say we really don't need. To, can I have another so stream for yeah, video yeah. production yeah, I'll some see other if we time? We have any questions here too. Um, got a question about cleaning the nozzle if it gets stuck with dried ink. Uh, that's tricky. It is. Um, it is. So they're, they're, go, go ahead. Oh, yeah. 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 I'd, I'd, you, you were remember who the star it. is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you have a couple of options. Um, so one, one thing that I do, um, and, and so the, the main method that we use is actually using ultrasonic cleaner. Um, we actually have, I, I don't know, do we have an actual guide on the, do we show that on the, on the documents, on the support docs? I believe we have, a, yeah, an acetone I think, ultrasonic okay. cleaner guide, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, and so yeah, it's it, like acetone and a thing, and then you put that in water, and then you use ultrasonic cleaner and, and clean it up. Um, what I actually have been doing um, with mine is I actually use the little, like the, the nozzles themselves come in little cartridges to like keep them clean. Yeah, all of our metal nozzles. Yeah, the metal nozzles, yeah, yeah. So whenever I, ha if I end up with a clog or something like that, what I actually do is I will, I will take that little thing and I'll, I'll actually take my little spray of uh, isopropyl and I'll just fill that up and put the nozzle back in it and just like shake it a little bit. And I usually just leave those ones to sit for a while. Um, it doesn't always work. It really depends on the material and like, like, how how like dried it's become, um, but that that is one way to do it. Yeah. And um, Bill, one of our support guys, has mm. been testing with acetone. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, it works really well with our ink. Okay, uh, it's like kind of mixed results with the, the solder paste, but with the interesting. ink, interesting, does a really great job of cleaning it out really quickly. So interesting. Um, yeah, using just the little caps and shaking it, it's cool. great. That's cool. I can dig it. Uh, yeah, yeah, no, that that I think that's. I mean that's that's sort of a that is a more common question um, that we get and like the and then the other option of course um, is if you're not using the metal nozzles you know the plastic nozzles um, just throw them out like don't don't worry about cleaning those yeah like, they're just dis they're disposable yeah they're they're meant to be and that's why you know disposable you get a whole bunch of dispensing for, tips that's yeah in the name yeah. yeah I like it yeah. but yeah the, and those work great I, I generally use them for solder paste and you can use them depending on your design and again this is this falls under that sort of DFM thing like. If, if you have a design that doesn't need, like sometimes we get users that come in and they're so familiar with their method that what they'll do is they will, they'll be making everything as like tight and small and like one of the problems I keep running into when I, like when I'm doing my project is I always forget to look at the size of the passive components I get. So I like order a whole bunch of like 0201 resistors and it's like, why did I do that? I didn't Where are to, they? I, yeah, I didn't need to do that. That was like, and so I get the bag and it's like, wow, like I hate myself. Um, and so, like these are, I think they're all 1206. Um, everything that I'm using here, except for one, I have one like really ginormous resistor for some reason. Um, but I mean, that, that's another thing to, to keep in mind as well. It's like dis coming up with the design and doing it based on what you think is going, what you're going to be printing with, what you're going to be using. You don't need to make everything absolutely super tiny if it doesn't need to be. Like this didn't need to be. I actually make this smaller than it needs to. 
but totally yeah we've got lots of room on the board still yeah it's, that's always the, uh, at least for the engineers out there, that's mm. always the dilemma. It's, it's the optimization is like, oh, I can make this fit on a penny. However, sometimes first prototypes <laughs> are useful sure. to, um, that's a lesson that took me a long time to learn. Sometimes oh, yeah? easier to test and prototype things if they're a little bigger. Obviously, in the end, you have mechanical constraints, especially yep. if it's like a wearable or it's battery powered, stuff like that. However, with our, what are the dimensions of the little FR4? The, the, like this one's two by three. Yeah, two by well, three, right. It, the print, the printable area is two by three. It's slightly larger. It's like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. whatever, yeah, ish around. Yeah, there. yeah. Even if even if a design needs to end up in a certain uh, you know form factor mm. for your first prototypes, where you're just trying to figure out, sure. making sure you understand the functional, totally. everything's functionally compatible with one another. You got the voltages right. Everything, you know, your first proof of concepts make it bigger. <laughs> Because right. you can afford to. And again, if it's resistors, they're a cent for 20, yeah. right? So yeah. stuff like that, it's yeah. not even worth getting that small. Totally. Yeah. Easier totally. to get uh, your probes in for testing continuity yes. and that kind oh, of yeah. thing too. Yes. So, yeah. I, I, uh, <laughs> I've definitely designed boards and then handed it off for testing. And someone's been like, how do I how do, I do this? I'm like, oh, well. Right. So sometimes Try it's harder. important to, yeah. yeah, sometimes <laughs> it's important to consider uh, both ease of assembly but also testability, especially when you're early on in development. Totally. Yeah. You can always downsize later. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And yeah, yeah. Speaking of size and components, we have a question about components. Oh, mm -hmm. so, uh, Do we recommend using BGA components for the Ooh. V1? Okay, here's, a, is, that, is, that, is that a real question? It's a real question. Yeah, it's on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that, okay, I was like, is that, is that a plant? <laughs> um, <laughs> right? No, because it, it's a I mean, great question. It, no, it is a great question. Yeah. It's just like I'm, I'm, I, I, I maybe, maybe you can talk to this a little bit. I, I mean, so I'll let first, you take it off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Um, so first off, technically you could do it. Don't, don't, just don't do it. Um, I don't recommend it. Like you, you can, you can potentially get away with it, but like BGA is a huge pain, even if you're using like traditionally fab boards. But keep in mind that like when you're printing with ink. Um, you, you could have slight height variance in between like the little the, the pads that you're going to be soldering to like if one is too high and it doesn't get soldered it, it's going to be a bad time like yeah you can reheat it and you can try and do stuff but working with BGA like I say on traditional boards is, is frustrating doing it with ink is, is worse um, so I don't recommend it if you can avoid it and again I, I mean obviously there, I guess there are going to be some components that like you can only get in BGA mm -hmm. but like I would imagine if you can get it in BGA, you can probably get not BGA and then make your prototype with that, downsize later. But yeah, but the thing I was going to say is that like, as someone who's an engineer and like knows all the things, um, I, I'm just, I'm always, I, that's why I asked if it was a plant, because it, it, to me it is a really good question, but mm -hmm. it, it, it comes up so commonly. Yeah. And I realize BGA is really common, but I'm, I'm always surprised at sort of the eagerness towards using BGA, given that, like I say, even with traditional boards, I hate using them. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think your instinct was correct there in saying, like, it is a pain to work with, because it is. Even if you have, um, like, you've gotten a board fabbed, like an F, like a four, six layer FR4 board sure. that is uh, super, well, not expensive, but like has tight tolerances and it's designed specifically for that, it's still a pain to do by hand. Um, but yeah, the, the unfortunate thing is that even though it's a pain, like a lot of, there are some applications where like the ICs are only available on that. Sure. For like, uh, especially high end stuff like uh, FPGAs. Um, oh, sure. And certain uh, data processing needs, it's kind of what you need to do. But at the same time too, for a lot of microcontrollers that do end up being um, either BGA or what's called, I forget the acronym, but WL. WLCSP, I believe, is the acronym. Obviously. But, uh, but, but it's like BGA, but even smaller. And it's, it doesn't actually have, you guys know the black epoxy of an IC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it doesn't even have that. It's literally just the silicone chip. Really? In capped on and plastic. And like the bond wires, direct, it's incredible. That's awesome. It's so cool to look That's, at. I've never seen that before. But it's a pain to do by hand. But yeah, unfortunately, um, really to do BGA well, you need a very level surface, which is why you have uh, in traditional circuit boards things like. Um, Enig, like gold yeah, leveling yeah. and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely assuming that the you know the pitch of the BGA and all that is acceptable for what we can do on the V1. Technically, you can. However, it's going to be a fun time. <laughs> also, do you, is it Enig? I always said Enig. Oh, I don't know. Oh, I don't. I just, I don't know. That wasn't like a. I, I just. I legit like. I always because I'm. I'm very. I 
try my best mm -hmm. to learn the terms and like understand and do the thing and like when someone is an expert and I'm not, I'm like, hey, I will do the, I'm, I'm gonna <laughs> copy this dude. So, so uh, a lot of people in the world, so I say LED. Yeah. You say LED. Well, sometimes, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I'll ever say lead. Okay, but no. the, the, my point right? is, is that this is something that is. is it, it just, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm curious about chat, like, do you, do you guys say LED or lead? Like, it will, sound off because we'll, I want to know. We'll, we'll let the poll come in, and, well, yeah. <laughs> and we we will kick you out accordingly. Well, yeah, we're also yeah. just a bunch of Canadians <laughs> speaking with our Canadian accent, and it's the same yeah. thing. Aluminium, al I don't know what aluminum. you're talking about. Yeah. Oh wow, we're gonna really enunciate it, eh? <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I. That's actually a good point. Is I don't know what that like the standard way of pronouncing sure. that is because this is something that I've encountered since. Le that is not something a part of my engineering education. Right. Uh, like I've learned it since, but you've got better things to worry about. Oh, of course. Um, you don't have to take a linguistics course in your engineering. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I I don't know if we have time for it now, but there's a long conversation about things that they should teach in engineering school, but they don't, which is a great application for the V1. I mean, um, I don't mean to be that guy. We got 24 minutes, and we, I'm like, we do. I don't want to miss anyone's questions if they're being asked in the chat. But anyways, yeah, not nothing too crazy in here. Uh, there's one question just about uh, forgetting to use the sacrificial layer when drilling um, and dr cause a little bit of damage to the heated bed. Uh, it's mostly just going to be a cosmetic issue. Um, you're probably fine to continue using it, but feel free to reach out to our support team, send some pictures, and we can go from there. But yeah, most likely just cosmetic. It's not a big issue. Also, I'm I'm just I'm just going to say it. I think I'm the only person at the company who's done that, and I was I, I mean I was definitely the first one to do it, and it happened. <laughs> well into my career here, and it was super embarrassing. And I'm pretty sure we, I don't know if we still have it, but we, the heater plate was taken off and put on display for at least some period it's of time. Is, somewhere. Is yeah. it still yeah. in the office? I think it might. It, oh, it was I, a little stand that was just like, oh, look. And, 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 have to find that and later on. when you see it, you'll know exactly what board it is. Yeah. Yep. That was, that was super embarrassing. Well, if you did it, then it's, it's fine. Well, that's, that's, that's know, what I'm saying. I was like, yeah, don't feel super it's, bad. It's like, happened. I'm, I, I, probably, I, I probably have more like, experience with the V1 than just about anyone in the world at this point. And yeah, I totally did it. I totally did it. And I was well beyond the, oh, I'm brand new at this. I don't know what I'm doing excuse. Like, no, that's, I just messed up. That was me. Yeah. Uh, another great question. Uh, does being a V1 user unlock a glorious beard? Um, ah! Yeah. Oh, immediately wow. you get like three weeks of growth as well, soon as you master the I mean, y you can tell. Like, <laughs> That's quite a question. I'm just, I, like, Mike is the one who uses the V1 most in his day-to-day -day probably, and look at that. And Evan's the one who uses it at least. Okay, yeah. okay, no need for but, personal but Mike, attacks here. Mike shaved this morning, though. So that's I did. Scary. I had to like. Well, yeah, he shaved, but then he like, was getting the V1 ready, and it's just like. Yeah. yeah. Yo, exactly. I, was, I was barefaced when I came in this morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, more serious questions. We've got a couple uh, <laughs> custom material questions and a couple nozzle questions. Sure. I'm going to hit the nozzle one first. Um, sometimes with really fine nozzles, especially the metal ones, yep. uh, even with uh, ultrasonic, that kind of cleaning, things still get clogged. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the important thing here is to make sure you're using the right nozzle for the material. Yes. Uh, we recommend like particle size to nozzle opening ratio of like six times nice. larger. Nice. So, you got um, it. You watched my video? Oh, yeah. Well, if you haven't checked out Mike's videos also, this is a good shout out time. Tons of them on the YouTube page. They're all ton of fun. Um, but yeah, if, if, if you're cutting that ratio down any further, you're going to run into clogs and blockages, and that's just the way it is. So if you're using our materials, use the, the 225 size nozzles, and then you'll be golden. Any smaller, it seems like you're going to get a finer trace, um, but you're just going to get clogs. Uh, but yeah, speaking of that, can I use my own solder paste? Uh, depends. So the main thing um, to keep in mind when, when doing solder paste is like, I mean, if, if, you, have, if you have the same composition, the same composition of, of, of metals in it, like you should be able to. Now, that being said, we've actually did, done a lot of testing with, with different, like obviously we want to have our product work really well. And I, I don't even know how many different, like different solder paste that we went through in testing. And, and the same with um, uh, solder wire as, as well. Um, and, you know, we would get stuff that was the, in theory, the exact same composition, but it did not work the same. Um, and I don't, I don't know, like, 
I'm certainly not the expert on that specific topic on like why it didn't work and like Matt probably would be better um, to answer like if, if he if we actually did do the research and figure it out but like yeah you, you potentially could you just want to make sure that like you're not using for example like lead solder paste with our silver ink that's gonna be a really bad time because chemistry um, but yeah, as long as it's, it's the same type, I mean, give it a shot. Like, there's, there's, there's no reason why you, you couldn't. Um, just keep in mind that, like, the machine will have been tested with the stuff that we make, and, and we have ver sort of verified it. You, you may not have as much success with yours. But, yeah. you know, if you run into troubles, you give us a shout-out. Yeah, a couple help. of things to note. Yeah, like, just what I mentioned about the nozzle size. Super important for solder, so make sure, yeah, particle ratio six yeah. times. There's a really good um, video, what is solder paste? Yeah, another thing is the, the printer can only get up to 240 degrees Celsius. Um, yep. So if you're solder, you can check the material uh, data sheet for it. Um, if it requires it to be heated up beyond that, um, it's probably not going to heat properly. So uh, you're probably going to need a low temperature solder. Well, alternatively, if you have a reflow oven that can get to that temperature, then you can dispense yeah, yeah. and mm -hmm. heat it your own way. But yeah, yeah, yeah that's the, yeah, the, if you're looking to heat it with the machine, yeah. 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 The reflow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Uh, Fun. But yeah, you can save your own profiles as well. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. If that's something you're interested in, uh, reach out to support. We can give you kind of the, the how-to guide on that. Um, and the custom profiles will be, they're not only just for the printing, but also like a reflow uh, profile. Like, yeah, exactly. Like the, whole, yeah. the whole thing, yeah, you can set you that can up. You can set up all the steps. Yep. So, yeah, if it needs to go to 90 degrees here for 30 seconds, then yeah. the ramp up, yeah. It'd be really, really good if we cool. eventually got that like built into the software real nice. But yeah, for the moment, it's, it's actually not that difficult. But yeah, yeah. shout out to support, and we can help you. Fun fact. I'm so ready. Mike's videos came up on uh, that, that answer there. We were talking about yeah, Mike's yeah. video on solder paste. Yeah, yeah. When I uh, applied for my current role, um, I was working on another hardware project at the time. And then I was like, oh, like, you know, interview prep. You should, like, research the company. Absolutely. Get everything to know. Google, Volterra, first thing that comes up. It's Mike's face. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Sure, I'll get, I guess I'll get, like, a good idea of, like, company culture and all that. And I, I learned everything. And I, there was so much I didn't know that you explained in that video, even though, like, what? I'd already been working as an engineer. I had my degree and all that. And I was like, oh, cool. Just because there's so much that I hadn't known about, like, the material science and sure, actually, like, right. the differences between, like, what works with a V1 versus, like, what you know, is more general and stuff like that. So That's awesome. Shout, that's, out, that's, shout out to that. If that's you sweet. Go, so, yeah, go absolutely. watch all of Mike's walkthroughs. If you <laughs> just got a V1 or you're starting to learn how to use it, like, for real, though, like, they're, they're so informative and they're mm -hmm. quick. Like, they're yeah. not long. Um, but, like, we've got great calibration videos, mm -hmm. uh, great sure. walkthrough of just, like, quickly the Hello World, yeah. the punk console. So, uh, yeah, really useful stuff. And, sure. I mean... Also worth noting, if there are things that you guys like want to see, like if you if you watch, we had we had a couple of comments in the solder paste video, um, and there was uh, one where someone asked because I, I talk about the difference between um, uh, fluxes, right? Mm -hmm. Like tack flux and, yep. and the different things. And someone asked like, oh, how do I know which one to do? And like we didn't answer that in the video, and I I, I had started a script for that video, like answering those questions. And like I would love to answer more of your questions and make more videos that do that. If you guys have stuff you want to know, if there's stuff that you want me to drill down, dig deep, whatever, let me know and we'll, we'll make them. Like, we're, we love doing it. It's super fun. Another great question on Mike's videos. Oh. Uh, when are we going to get, <laughs> it's, it's going to be a bad time or it's going to be a good time t-shirts? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That'd be amazing. Yeah. And I mean, why, I don't know why that doesn't exist. Like, what, yeah, totally. Right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's if you don't get real. the reference, you got to watch the video. you got to go watch the video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, delightful. I love yeah. it. I, I think, love it. I think I'm remembering that you have a lot less facial hair in some of those videos. I also have a lot less hair. Yeah, you, you yeah. generally just have a lot less hair. It was like right when we did the very first video, I, I had actually like just started growing it. So, yeah. yeah That's your like, before, this is your after. Yeah, pretty much. Good. It's yeah, good. Was, yeah, I mean, living the dream. But <laughs> No, no, that, that's, that's awesome. Well, so would would it be would it would it say both would it say like it's going to be a good time on the front and it's going to be a good a bad time on the back or yeah I don't, why not like, I don't I don't know what the yeah like we yeah well we, what do you want to communicate or to the people be in front of you and the people behind you time yeah I don't yeah. circle your own adventure oh nice <laughs> nice yeah I love it but yeah no that's that's awesome yeah like I said we want to make a lot more content we want to make a lot more uh, many more videos that go into more detail about about what's going on 
Mm. Uh, because, yeah, it, it, I think it's super fun. And, and again, this, this sort of goes back to, and we've talked about this, with, with how much I, I think that this is a really good way to get people access to developing electronics. Mm -hmm. And you can't, I, like, I had to learn a whole heck of a lot when I started doing all this stuff. And you can't expect to just, like, I certainly don't expect to just plop a V1 in front of someone and suddenly they're developing, you know, amazing projects, right? Like, that's just not how it works. You got to teach them. You got you to gotta show them, hey, this is what this is and this is what that is. And I think that it, I, I feel that I, I want it to be our responsibility to some extent to help sort of, like, bring everyone else forward into this, like, age of, Hey, you want to make a, a, a you want to make a bass pedal because you think it'll be cool. You can do that. Like, you don't have to be some big fancy guy or, or girl to do this. Um, but you you can. You totally can. You you have the capacity. You just you just need a little bit of help, and that's what we want. To, that's what I want to do. I mean, I won't I won't speak for you guys. It's what everyone wants to do too. I know. I can tell. Look at that smile. Yeah, we. I feel like if you go in our, our messaging history between the two of us at the company, it's just like right? it's like twenty percent like talking about board stuff, talking about design, talking mm. about assembly. The rest of it's like, oh, like what? How can like we teach? How yeah. can we do that? And it's just my expect. We should do this. We should do that. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. But I mean, I'm I'm there. The reason I'm really excited about that and the application of the V1 for that is just. I mean, a lot of uh, there's a lot of different settings in which people can use the one to learn about electronics. Sure. Um, for me in particular, like I went to school, I got my degree, my undergrad degree, uh, a bachelor of electrical engineering, um, which was great. Um, I learned so much. I loved it. However, the first time I designed a board was in my second last month of my degree. Right. Um, That's wild. Which is ridiculous. I like went to one of the best schools we have in Canada here, and. Uh, like when a, a great school with fantastic professors, fantastic uh, peers, and yet I think if I would go back to my class of, uh, I think it was it was somewhere it was like fifty something people that year, and I was to go and follow up with them today. I think three of them know how to design a circuit board, wow. right? Like I and, and I am one of them. Yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> um, which it's it's just so strange, and I mean it, it. Part of it comes down to the fact that um, traditionally PCBs just don't really fit well in. Uh, in a curriculum, right? Especially sure. when you have to design a board, yep. wait a week, oh, what if totally. it doesn't get in on time? And that really messes with your, you know, your course rhythm, your pace, if logistics, if the board just doesn't work and yeah. you have a project due next week, you kind of can't do it, right? So it's really exciting to see the applications of the V1 in, um, like, not just university, also in, high, like, for other age sure. groups. Um, totally. And just, like, and even beyond that as, like, a hobbyist tool as well. Yeah. And just, like, the ability to just, like, put something in front of someone. And, again, like, sure, it might not be doing, you know, super advanced BGA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 200 pin things. But it is a fantastic tool for those applications where someone is trying to figure out, how do I design a microcontroller board? How do right. I design a guitar pedal or a bass pedal? Right. Stuff like that gets or me really excited. a breakout excited. board for your Raspberry Pi or, yeah. or yeah, whatever. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's... it's that's what gets me really excited. So every time Mike gets really <laughs> stoked on it, I'm, I'm like, just like, yeah, let's well, do it. Because the thing for me is, like, I remember you telling me uh, before about how, yeah, you, you didn't really do any actual, like, board design no. in your university class. And, and I think back, and I, I actually did when I was in high school, right? And I think I just went to, like, I, I had this foolish assumption that everyone had the same high school experience. No, you went to a cool high school. Right? You just yeah. went yeah. to a really cool yeah. high school. Center Wellington <laughs> District High School. Um, anyway, uh, go Falcons. Um, <laughs> uh, but they, it was, it was a, at the school, like we did, we did acid etching. So like mm. we had copper clad boards and, you know, Mr. Wagner would be like, here, take a Sharpie and we draw lines, we draw our traces and, and put them in acid, etch them. And so cool. Take them out and we drill press and like put through whole components and do all these things. And like I said, I thought that was, I thought that was the normal high school experience. And then I, I talked to all these amazingly smart people that, you know, have these amazing degrees and, and do all these wonderful things. And there's this huge misstep, this giant gap, where they learn all this, this theoretical stuff, but like they never got their hands on a board. And like, to me, that's nuts. Because again, like I said, I did it in high school. And, and I, I then think, I look at the V1, and I was like, if I was, in, if I was in Mr. Wagner's class and I had this at the desk, we wouldn't all be doing the same, like, you know, by the numbers, Let's just, because I mean, really, what we did is is a bunch of straight lines yeah. that connected resistors to LEDs. Like it wasn't, we didn't come up with a project. We didn't do something unique and interesting. Well, I mean, it was interesting, but like we didn't get to be creative and like really flex our brains. Mm -hmm. And it's like if I had this 
at, at in, in that classroom, I'm sure all the kids like we would we would we would have made bass pedals. We would have made like all sorts of crazy fun stuff. Yeah. And like, imagine then going into your degree and you'd already had all that experience. Like. Yeah. Forget I, about it. It definitely would have made me. I mean, I, I loved what I studied, but there is sure. also there is also a bit of fatigue because essentially all we do is, I I think I was even it was like a third year class and it was advanced. It was on like how semiconductors work, like sure. how transistors, yeah, yeah. how do they work, how do diodes work, how do microcontrollers work. Um, very interesting class, but then the labs were like, here's a breadboard, here's some LEDs, and right. like here's a MOSFET. Just follow this thing we've already told you to do, um, and it was basically just yeah, you got a breadboard and then and that was it. Or you just use simulation software, which are right. good, which are oh, not bad learning tools. Sure. However, when you can bring something in and actually sh show something that's more representative, like, oh, this is what um, the first step in what this will actually look like in the real world, mm. if you like work in this sort of industry or with the, this or that, I don't know, it just gets people excited. And it's just, it's just, it's just so much, it's just such a better way well, to Well, and teach. it's just like even us, we, we've used the V1 so much. Yeah. We're still mesmerized when sure. it prints the traces, right? Like, it's just a really cool, rewarding and like instant gratification process like yeah. even if it doesn't work it's still cool it is yeah it, it, it's <laughs> super neat I, it yeah it, I don't know, it's, it's awesome i just i feel like you could go on for hours i could i could just i, I could it. just like talk about like all these cool things and like these fun little projects and like all these 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 interesting applications and i think one of the things that I, i've said this countless times i think that one of the uh, sort of ironically, one of the, the, the biggest hurdles of the V1 is that it's such a sandbox. It's so open. Like, you can do so many things with it. And, uh, and this was sort of the same sort of problem that people have with 3D printers, where, you know, you, everyone's, all oh, 3D printers are the, the next new hot thing. Everyone gets a 3D printer, and they get it, and they're like, well, now what do I make with it? Right? And yeah, it does, you, like, you do have to do some design. You have to do some sort of, like, it, it's not just, it's not an easy bake oven. Right, it's you. You gotta. You wanna. You gotta have that desire. You gotta design. You gotta do that. And I mean, students are the best place for that. But yeah, I just. It, there's so many cool things, and, I, and I'm. I'm really excited to be doing more projects. Like I've got other stuff that I'm working on. I mean, I've, I've talked to them about it. You guys don't know oh, about it yet, secret. but you will. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's lots of really cool stuff that you can be making. Um, and I just. I wanna. I wanna be a catalyst for all the people out there that I know can make really cool stuff. Because I've spent all that time talking to our users, you know, back when I was doing support, talking with people who are doing like the most amazing tech. And even finding quirky ways to get around some limitations and do other things. And I, yeah, I want to facilitate that. I want to be a catalyst for that. I, I want that to be our thing. So yeah, it's just, it's super cool. Mm -hmm. you, your eyes lit up. I'm, Oh, yeah. Oh. Well, somebody's asked if we can have a stream where Mike just talks about nothing but cool projects. I think that's <laughs> okay. a great idea. Can I, can I be there, too? We, we do have the rest, of the, the rest of this stream. We can just keep that going. Oh, we can man. roll on that. Yeah, just... uh, but a more practical question is, can you laser cut uh, the FR1 boards to custom shapes for, for your boards? Or, if not, is there a better right. way of cutting them? So, okay, so, like, generally... Like technically, I mean, you you could I mean with FR1 or FR4, you you can you can mill them. Now, of course, again with the glass dust stuff, you ought to be careful with FR4. Um, I have cut like I have cut FR FR1 with like hand tools functionally. Mm -hmm. um, it's doable. I don't actually know about laser cut. Like I I'm sure it can be done. I'm sure like a, a laser absolutely could cut it. That's not a question. But not being a chemist, sorry, Dad. He was a chemistry teacher. Um, <laughs> he's so sad. Right he's, now. he's just dying inside. <laughs> um, I actually don't know if there's any risk of like potential outgassing or like I, that. I don't know. That yeah. I would absolutely look up. Whenever you get resin and lasers, and yeah, burning, right? like it, it depends on what type of resin is used, whether yeah. it's safe to breathe in, whether you've got good ventilation. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Probably technically possible, but yeah, do a little bit of your own research yeah. to make sure you're uh, not going to give yourself cancer or anything. Yeah, like I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to like send you off on that. But yeah, yeah. Uh, and like I say, if, if you have like a CNC, like a little CNC mill, yeah, or whatever, CNC, like that, little yeah, CNC, that'll do it. Mills, great. Um, or I mean, if you have a laser, yeah, that'd be cool. Ooh, yeah, water laser. Yeah. Dude, I want I want a laser so bad. Ah, yeah. I didn't like, know that that was what that was called. Yeah. Wait, I didn't know a laser was a thing. Really? No. Oh, dude, yeah, we're is like. Is it just like a, a water jet? Yeah, 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 yeah. We're like pals with them. I know, like Aura and them. They talk to them like. At least, I mean, I hope we're pals with them. Man, they're like, <laughs> maybe they're on the stream right now. They're like, oh, how dare they? 
Yeah. I have a lot of Google. We Don't are, talk to uh, us. We are acquaintances as most. Yeah. Most, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to pretend I'm pals with them because they're yeah. really cool. And I want them to like me. Notice me, Wazer Senpai. Oh, yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Are there any other questions? Uh, just uh, for Mike, yeah. uh, what is the coolest thing you've seen someone make with the V-Line? Oh, man. There's too many. <sighs> Whatever I mean, I'm well, about to make. Wow, yes, <laughs> yes, dominate. Uh, uh, a bass pedal, for sure. Right? Yeah. Oh, that's, that's actually really tough. And the, the, honestly, like, that question, I like the question, don't get me wrong, but it kind of hurts because there are things I, I actually can't tell you. Like, there are, like there, are, there are certain projects that I have talked with people that I'm, I'm not legally allowed to talk to people about, which, like, sucks. Because I don't want to, I want to tell you what the cool thing is. But, like, I, don't, we, I mean, we've got people doing, like, crazy medical stuff where they're doing, like, weird wearables or, like, they, like some people were working on, like, some subcutaneous stuff, which is just, like, insane. Um, I don't know. I, I, I actually kind of like a lot. Antennas for satellites. And oh, man. Like that too. Dude. Antenna stuff's crazy. My, 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 my guy, Aaron, the, the, the guy that helped me with the, the base thing, um, he... Like, he would print these antennas. Like, he used to just test antennas all the time. He would just, he, he knew so much about RF. And he would just, he'd be using the V1 for printing, like, all these wacky shapes of antennas. And he'd show me these graphs. And it was kind of like you. I'd be like, hey, what's up? How's, how's the thing going? And he'd show me this, like, circular graph that I, like, I, I don't know. I, it looks like an empty void to me. Like, it's just like, I'm going to get sucked into this, yeah. and I can never escape. Uh, like th that kind of stuff, but I, I, yeah, I think I realistically I I'm inclined towards some of the more fun stuff. So I remember a user who was actually working on a little video game controller, um, and it was adorable. It was the coolest little thing, and it, it was I mean it was just a controller. It was just like it was buttons and and whatnot. But they designed it. It had like a little bit of flair. Like they designed some like silk train stuff and whatnot. Um, and I actually I really loved that project. I thought it was it was probably one of my favorites. Um, it was super fun. Um, and I helped them a lot on support. They ran into a, a lot of issues, and, and we, we worked through it. A lot of it was just Gerber-related stuff. Uh, but that, I think that was actually probably my favorite, even though it's not necessarily the, like, maybe the coolest. Like, well, You're also a huge I video mean, game buff. So I, I, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. The, one, the was the one, <laughs> one, of, one of my favorites, though, that I got, actually, which was slightly the, not the best ad for the V1. Um, uh -oh. No, no, it's great. No, you're gonna <laughs> love it. Well, worried now. Um, it was a it was a high school student, um, and it was actually the the teacher. I'd I'd been back and forth with them, and uh, they 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 integrated the V1 into their their class, and so their student had developed a uh, parachute deployment system for a rocket that they had made <laughs> with the V1, um, and it was awesome. And and they had like a little video, and they, they it, like. Technically, it worked. The video that we got, though, was this rocket just like shooting up. It looked amazing. It was awesome. Like, I, I never got to, I did a lot of model rocketry as a kid. I never did it in high school, but like, I mean, my dad was a science teacher, so I got to do a lot of cool stuff. Um, and that rocket went straight up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, normally you get kind of near the top, and then you get that little puff, and yeah. then your thing comes out, and it just kind of arced and just started coming back down, <laughs> kept coming down. And then the student said a word that, you know, your teacher probably didn't approve of, and that thing just buried itself. Um, and, yeah, you know, it, it didn't work that time. Um, but, like, the, the board did, in fact, like, it was good. Uh, but that, I, that was one of my favorites, actually. That, that video was so classic. Hmm. Like, high school, it reminded me so much of, like, the, the stuff we do and, like, trying to, to, to do these things that are, that are just outside your comfort zone, just outside your grasp. Um, and I like that's that's what I want want us to be doing. So like yeah, yeah I, I love that one. It's it's so crazy to see the breadth of projects that people yeah. use the viewing on. Like from high school projects to uh, like there's been numerous journal articles that it's been mentioned in. And then there's sure. like oh here's this like biomedical application and it's sensing like it's an EEG transducer and it's like yeah. what <laughs> right? Yeah, crazy. Yeah, wild. Apparently your crazy circle chart is called a Smith chart. Yeah, I, I was I was I was about to I was about to ask. Did it look like it had spirals on it? Yeah, yeah. Well, dude. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I tried. I tried. I tried to understand it. I looked at it. Okay. I mean, I know nothing about it. I either. saw the numbers. 
It's like, okay. I have a hard enough time with, uh, you were helping me with uh, LEDs and uh, angle thing. Angle thing? You remember? The, the, oh, yeah, 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 like optoelectronics. Like yeah, yeah, the, the, angles the, yeah the thing, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I got it. I, I, we got there. I, I, we got there, but like, I, yeah. that, but that, that was hard enough for me, but those Smith charts? Oh. I think it's... Is that a spoiler of a future project, potentially? Oh, no. Yeah, we didn't say anything. <laughs> I, I, it's in, I still am amazed that like the V1 is able to print stuff that works for RF. Oh, like, right. It's in yeah because that uh, a little spoiler into my university career. I took one, one course in RF, got terrified, didn't do so hot, and I was like, nope, getting away from there. I'm doing like digital electronics and like application stuff. So, yeah. but like just the idea of like things working at that high of a level, it's just insane. I feel you, man. We have finished baking. All baked. The we, V1 is safe to touch again. Although, technically, it is still hot. Oh, it's still hot. Yeah. It's still hot. Yeah. It's still we've spicy. Got, we've got red LEDs. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, don't, don't touch the V1 if it's hot. I mean, you, you can use your own judgment. <laughs> really, like, you know, it's not necessarily, it's not going to kill you. Uh, you just might lose fingerprints. Oh, actually, so, yes. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to move on to the thing. Um, I don't want to kick Evan out. Yeah, but, yeah. I mean, like, but we should probably let him go do his oh, job. Yeah, gotta, the actual job. Gotta yeah. go do secret things, I oh, yeah. guess. So yeah. secret. Well, thank you so much for having me, guys. Yeah, yeah. Great, no, thanks great for coming. Out. Yeah, it was and, awesome. And uh, yeah, make sure to keep watching the stream. Oh, yeah, and I next will. time yeah. bring your keyboard, and then we'll jam. Yeah, we'll jam. I have to learn how to actually play music now. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. If you see any plants in the comments, it's me. Nice. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> keep that. I'll keep that thank, in mind. Thanks for having me, guys. Oh yeah. Thanks, thanks for showing up. Uh, keeping us occupied because we're super boring. Okay. Cool, Mike. So what's okay. next for so, us? So yeah. So I mean, I'm just. I mean, technically, I, I've disappeared from the camera momentarily, and then I'm back. Um, so uh, we've cured one side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show you guys the um, uh, rivet list vias. So well, we're actually going to switch camera to this like overhead camera um, in my little workbench, and then I'm going to show you how I fill these and sort of explain about it a little bit. Um, and yeah, and, and we're going to do that. And then once once I've got them filled, we'll put it back on the board and we'll print the other side. Uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and if you have questions at any point, just keep tossing them in the chat, and we'll uh, we'll get to them when we can. All right. So yeah, I've got my board. Um, one thing I I'm going to do is I'm going to use some tape, um, this little painter's tape. Which apparently is not masking tape. I was I was yelled at about that. I always thought they were the same thing, but no, they are not the same thing. Don't you dare suggest they are. That was my wife. Uh, okay, cool. So what I've done is I've just put some tape on the back, and this is basically just that I can fill these um, vias and not have to worry about ink coming out the back. It, sh it should be pretty self-explanatory. Um, so. Uh, again, you can, of course, all of these could be rivets. Um, they don't have to be filled vias. Uh, it's just some people ask about it, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it for some of these. Um, so fortunately, I have actually labeled. Um, you can see I've, I've got labels for everything that is, is actually going to be a through-hole component. So I'm just going to fill the other things. So it's actually, it's, it's really straightforward. I mean, it really is just a matter of, of um, I'm just going to make sure that I can, this way? Yeah, okay, cool. Thank you, producer Shelley. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna I'm just turning the um, the gear on the dispenser. And I'm just gonna put it inside, and I'm I'm just gonna empty some uh, some uh, ink in there. And one thing that I find is really useful is you want to start sort of deep and then sort of swirl around the edge as you come up. Um, oftentimes, the way I describe it is like if you're filling an ice cream cone, you know how you want to like fill the cone, and if you just start at the top, you're just going to get a bunch of air in there. Same sort of thing here. And this is actually potentially more concerning because, of course, we are going to heat this. Um, so if you have trapped air in there when you heat it, it's going to be a bad time, as they say. So fill that guy. Beautiful. Um, and yeah, this, this is a, a fairly, like, it, it's pretty straightforward. Whoops. Helps if you turn the gear the right way. Um, this, yeah, this, I find this is actually a very effective way of, of doing vias if, if you so choose. Um, I know some people probably, they're really concerned um, about the nozzle itself. Of course, you could, if, for example, you have a clogged nozzle, 
you could always swap that one out and just snap the end off so it's a bit, um, so it's just got a big giant nozzle and then you just dump more material in uh, more easily. Uh, my experience has been, I realized that the um, nozzles, they are fragile, of course. I'm not going to suggest they're not. But I, I often, I, I, not often, I sometimes am curious about, um, I've definitely had conversations with users where they are able to break them more easily than perhaps I would expect. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I'm actually sort of uh, letting it touch the edge of the uh, of the the hole for the via uh, as I as I dispense. Um, I'm not too worried about it. Like I'm, I'm and I was gonna say I'm not gonna break this nozzle. I've never broken a nozzle when doing this, but of course I'm gonna say it and then immediately break a nozzle and embarrass myself. So. I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to keep on filling. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to fill these up, um, and then I, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to I'm going to wipe down the board um, just to make sure everything's nice and flat. Um, and then I'm actually I'm going to flip the board, um, and this is where things sort of deviate a little from our old method. Um, I don't I don't leave the uh, tape on when I cure. Um, that's actually, we used to do that, and I don't know if it's just that this quote-unquote painter's tape is extra problematic, but I, I tried doing it with this tape, and I found that it left like a crazy sticky residue after heating, which, I mean, makes sense. Um, so I actually take it off uh, before I cure, which shouldn't be a problem. Uh, but let's just do... do, do, do. Um, I don't know, like uh, Nathan, if you if you got if you got any cool, cool questions from the cool crew. The cool crew are a bit uh, silent right now. Wow. Probably uh, eating they're, lunch or something. No, they're mesmerized. Depending where they are, yeah. They're like, oh, I gotta gotta see these holes get filled. It's so exciting. Um, yeah, man. Oh man, we should we should totally we should have had this should have been a lunch stream. We should have got pizza. Oh, that's a great idea. Right. Next time. Next yeah. time. Yeah. I suppose the other method you could use for this is just using the uh, uh, like the syringe for these cartridges as well. Yeah, I, I haven't tried that, um, and yeah, I imagine that probably would work pretty well. Um, I just, I yeah, I've done this a bunch of times, and I'd, I've never never had too much. Uh, the other thing also to note, I like I say, I use the larger holes simply because it's going to be a little bit easier uh, to see what I'm doing. Uh, but it is is going to use a bit more ink than I need to, and it does take a little bit longer to fill than if we use the smaller holes. Uh, but you can definitely do it with the smaller holes, and I generally would recommend it. Um, one thing worth noting as well uh, is I would always recommend when you're doing your uh, when you're doing vias or rivets, um, maybe make your your pad your round pad around it a little bit bigger than you think you need to. Um, it's just always good to have extra material to sort of bite into, or in the case of, of this, to touch with uh, ink. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my isopropyl spritzer. Sounds like a drink. Um, you do not want to drink that. Do not drink that. Do not drink <laughs> IPA. That is, that is the one takeaway from, from this stream. Yeah, this isn't a, a hipster IPA. No. Oh, right. See, I don't know much about alcohol, so I forget that IPA is actually a thing. Um, so I wiped this down, and I know that there, one of these is just a little uh, underfilled, so I'm just going to add a little bit more material to it. You've got to have steady hands. I'm told I have very steady hands. I don't think I have very steady hands, and like you can see on the stream, I totally don't have steady hands. But um, they, like, uh, they like having me assemble boards because... When we got really tiny components, I, uh, I can get them pretty, pretty well. I'm pretty, pretty, pretty solid. So we've got a question about, uh, on average, how many calibration prints do you do? Oh, like, when, like, like uh, adjustments and stuff? That, uh, I, that one is, is difficult for me to say. So I, like, I've been printing for a long time. Like, I, I generally, I pretty much will always do two, even if the first one's perfect. Yeah. But I, would, I wouldn't expect a new user to get it done in two. I might expect someone who's never done it before 
they might have to do five. They might, I mean, ten. It really, it really depends on how how good it come, how, how well things progress. Yeah. Um, yeah. We mentioned earlier, like spending more time on that step. Is, yeah. Is only going to benefit you. So if it, like, you shouldn't feel uh, like you're doing it wrong if uh, if you're doing ten of them or twelve of them. Um, but yeah, typically, like, if it's if it's an ink I'm familiar using. Um, yeah, two or three will usually do the trick. Mm. Uh, but again, we've gotten a feel for priming the cartridge uh, by hand as well before even sticking it on the printer. Yeah, um, that's a big so, one. And that's a big part of the process. So yeah, if, if it takes you four or five times, uh, definitely within uh, kind of the, the regular range, I would say, with that. Uh, but yeah, don't feel bad if it takes you more. Uh, it's, it's absolutely worth spending that time to, to get really good traces. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, so I'm just uh, flipping the board over now um, because we're going to be on the, the print side. I've now put um, tape on the front. Um, I find, so th this is a sort of a trick that I discovered when I was d doing this board, is that the, normally I, when I had previously done it long, long ago, I found that you didn't, you, you'd only put tape on the one side and away you go. But I think because this ink is thicker, sometimes it's a little bit tougher for it to actually fill in all the way to the bottom. So if I do the one side and then flip it over, I can just verify that material has gone all the way to the bottom, um, which I find sort of pays pretty good dividends in the end. So I'm just going to touch these guys up. And these are all actually pretty well filled. Um, I got a bit of a technique. I've been, I've been doing it a bunch. The first time when I, I did this flip thing, I found that... I, uh, I had to refill almost all of them, so. so let's get some IPA, just wipe it down, everything should be nice and flush, uh, and that looks pretty good, I might add a little bit here, um, but yeah, it, it, I mean, like I say, it's, it's not like it's, you're not a huge time saving as opposed to rivets. Um, the one benefit, I suppose, is that uh, if, for whatever reason, like you can't rivet because you're worried about like the impact force on your on your material, or um, you know, you, you I don't know. The, there are many reasons why one might not be able to do rivets. This is an option. So you can see I've now got those holes filled. Um, everything else is ready to go, and uh, so now I'm going to mount it over on our board, on our printer rather, um, and then we can. Get to printing. There we go. Okay. Now, what there is one thing that we're going to want to be very careful of, uh, which I will show you in a moment. All right, so we're done baking, cool. Go back to the start. Now we're going to print, and we're going to do an aligned print, of course, because we have to make sure things line up. Yep. Um, and I'm going to be lazy. I'm going to say load last circuit. Um, but then i got to flip it because it's loading the top layer, and what I actually want is the bottom layer. Um, and as someone asked before with the uh, file extensions, or, or the formatting, rather, you can see that my uh, resave uh, file is a .gbl, which is Gerber bottom layer. So when I open it, it will mirror. Yeah, and this is probably a good time to also mention a new feature that we have in the software. Uh, in oh. The last couple of weeks, we do have a, a mirroring button now. Yep. Um, so if you uh, forgot to name it with that uh, GBL extension and just left it as a Gerber, a standard Gerber, um, you can just flip it here as well. Yep. Um, just yeah, verify that <laughs> it is flipped the way you want before continuing. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So you can see that we've got. Um, I just put the, the name VTS distortion because reasons. Uh, mount the probe. All right. So um, I'm going to be. Oh, I do need to adjust the clamps slightly. Um, I just right now what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that there's enough that the probes aren't at all overlapping with the fiducials there. I'm not actually going to be using those to align. Um, I'm going to be using existing holes. Uh, but, so the, and the one thing I, you want to keep in mind is if I'm going to use these existing holes, make sure I don't click on a hole that has ink in it. Otherwise, I'm going to have a bad time. So, there it is. I'm going to use this one. 
There it is. Indeed. Indeed. T-shirt pre-orders soon. Right? <laughs> Check out our Kickstarter. Um, yeah. So yeah, this one, this one's uh, pretty straightforward. Um, one thing y you might have noticed, but I'm guessing probably didn't, because why would you, um, is that I actually have thicker traces on this side than the other side. Um, I just had more space, so I was, I just, I made them thicker. Um, it turns out, though, that I don't think they actually print any thicker. And this is actually a useful thing to keep in mind. Uh, again, this is sort of that DFM thing where, um, and I can show this in a bit more detail once we get a little bit further along, but you have to keep in mind that the, the width of a line it can be whatever it is in the software but, uh, or in, in your CAD design. But at the end of the day, it actually has, like, it has to conform to some, some uh, number of our nozzle width. Because we, we only print the width of the nozzle. So that means that, you know, if you, have, if you have a, I mean, just to go with the width of the nozzle, if you have a 225 nanometer trace, perfect. That's, that's the size of the nozzle. Everybody's happy. If you make it 230, the trace is going to be the exact same size because it's going to be 225, it's going to be the size of the nozzle. So, and then we just do multiple passes with the nozzle to do thicker and thicker lines, but it's always going to be in a step of a nozzle width. So I'm pretty sure that despite the fact that I've made these traces thicker, I think they're not actually thicker enough that we have more traces being put down. Yeah, you haven't hit the threshold for another pass another, yeah, to happen. Yeah, exactly. Now, there are ways we can, we can adjust that in the software by adjusting our pass spacing, um, which is uh, this guy right here, and that dictates the, the space between passes. And so the, the smaller you make it, the more passes you have, the bigger, the, the fewer. Um, but yeah, we don't really need to do that here. Just something to be aware of. Oh, I suppose I should actually just do a quick confirm alignment. Just to make sure. Drop it in a hole. Amazing. We okay. did it. And then we're going to probe. I believe in you, Predator. Wait, why'd you drop in there? Oh, is that, is that where it's... St oh, okay. We're cool. It's probing. Yeah, yeah. I just... I don't know why. I, I realized it just homed. I just, for some reason, I expected... It to home again. Yeah, to home again. Yeah. I don't know why I expected that. That's dumb. But yes, cool. Machine smart. So smart. It's the smartest. Smarter than a sixth grader. All right. What's what's chat look like? Anything exciting? It's a little slow right now. Oh yeah, I totally um, uh, the the feature to fill. Rivetless vias. That I mean, totally an awesome thought and something oh, I've talked about many, many times with software. And it would be super cool if we could do it. Um, absolutely. And like technically, the technology is there to be able to do it. Um, the problem, the problem really rests with being absolutely accurate with with alignment for things. Um, and I remember talking with software a long time about about how we could sort of figure out the position of holes exactly and stuff like that. Um, but we never really came up with a really good method for making sure that we absolutely are in dead center of that hole because yeah. if you go slightly too far, you You're snap the nozzle, nozzle and oh, yeah. that, that is not worth it. So, and, th and that's one of the reasons, like, like I say, the, the filled vias is not like a, it's not like a supported, like it's not an official, I realize this is our official stream, but like this is, this is the life hacks with Mike and yeah. Nathan. So we're going to do it the cool way. Um, that's, that's, so that's why we don't, we, we haven't done that. But it, it is something that, that I definitely have talked about um, with software previously, about how we could potentially do that. Um, and it just, like, it's not, it's not as straightforward as I would like it to yeah, be. It's a good dream list. I, I, yeah, I, for, I, sure. for sure. Yeah, I would definitely love, love to be able to do that. I mean, there's yeah. a lot of cool things. That, yeah, if you break one nozzle, not a big deal. But if you're printing... Yeah. Seven <laughs> filled vias and you break seven nozzles, that's right? not that's no. not gonna be a good time. No. Um, so yeah, yeah, that's definitely a, a a be a nice thing to have, but very, very risky. And I mean uh, the software generally is is fairly conservative with, with its 
like measurements and whatnot. So for example, like our, our height um, discrepancy for for throwing an error, like we're very cautious about that because we want to, we really want to make sure that nozzles don't get broken. Um, yeah, I think the biggest thing is the alignment part mm -hmm. is a human yes. input. Um, because you're you're setting the alignment based yep. on, on your eye what you're seeing. And yep. so uh, if if there was a way to do that with a machine, we could get more accurate, but yeah, it's currently done by a human. So um, there's added risk there. Totally. All right. So yeah, we're gonna now do another um, calibrate. Fortunately, um, so one thing that, that sometimes you just ask about, and it's something we, we've also talked about internally, um, and something I'd, I'd like to add as a feature at some point, is uh, the ability to move the calibration pattern. Um, because of course, if it lands in on a feature or something that, that could potentially be problematic, uh, the, I actually was careful when doing this board so that it, it wouldn't, like the, I made sure that all my holes weren't like, uh, amalgamated in the center of the board, specifically because I was worried about the calibration pattern. So again, that's, that's sort of that DFM thing. Um, that is a lot of material. Yeah, yeah, and, and maybe something we could look into is um, just for future releases is being able to move the calibration pattern. Yeah. Uh, within your design area. Yeah. So it's on a more optimal place. Uh, that would be pretty doable, I think. Yeah, we have we've had we've had a couple requests for that, and like there there. It, it's very rarely a problem. Yeah. Like, it, oh, it's totally. almost never a problem. Um, but as with anything, there's, there's always going to be that one guy who's going to do something real clever and ends up making it not work. Um, so, yeah, that, that has happened. Now, there are actually also ways around that. Um, you can actually change the calibration pattern to be a different. You can change the file, which potentially is how you could move it. It's not a super clean method, but... It is an option. So, like I say, if, if you run into if you if you have a board and the calibration pattern is a problem, contact support. We can absolutely get you on track. Um, but like I say, I think in the however long I've been here, I've run into two boards maybe that like ran into trouble because of the calibration pattern. One was that they had a board that was so small it was actually smaller than the calibration pattern, which obviously is a problem. Um, and then the other one was actually a board that was a ring. So it was just a hole in the middle, and so the calibration pattern wanted to print in the middle of the board, and it couldn't. Um, so yeah, that I mean, those those are sort of the two main instances, and like I said, we were able to get around them. We found we have we have methods for um, how to deal with those instances. They're just so rare that you know we've got other bugs we've got to squash that kind of stuff. Uh, all right, calibration is good. I didn't really need to print that one twice, but like I say, I like to do it twice just just to be safe. And uh, we're gonna we're gonna print side two. Yeah, we got an interesting question slash idea. Oh, I'm so ready. Um, so, uh, what can be added in the future to integrate a small camera in the probe pitch to ensure proper alignment? Currently, it's more of an eyeball process. And they said kind of like you integrated in the upcoming Volterra printer. So, oh, uh, man. spoiler, they're spoilers. they're they're uh, sure. yeah, on the ball. But um, yeah. yeah, I think the difficulty is is like we had a hard time developing the drill mm -hmm. uh, is is the pogo pins. That's kind of the limiting factor, isn't it? Yep, yeah, and that, that, is, that is definitely a big one for doing that internally. Now, that said, um, we do in fact have, like for uh, when we do internal ink testing, there is actually, we have a microscope mount that we 3D printed. I don't think we have the files for it anymore, unfortunately, but um, that actually sits on top of the dispenser and sits at a 45, and we actually use that when we're printing our material, so we can, we'll draw a line and we'll have a microscope on it, so we can actually measure its spread and, and, and height and all sorts of stuff. Um, so, like, we have, and I, I think we may actually have a couple of users who have done something similar, where they've, you know, done their own little 3D printed thing, and, and, you know, they're not running the camera through the software, but they've got it open on their machine, and, and they've got something in that yeah. regard. And, and we do use uh, a camera attachment for calibrating every one of our printers. Oh, of course, uh, right. On, on the way out the door. I totally so, forgot I designed that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I, I think there, there are, could be some creative solutions uh, down the road. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely. So yeah, there are definitely ways to do it. And, and, and it's, it's one of those ones where it's definitely, like I would, it, it's certainly a thing that we could develop and, and make a thing and release and whatnot. Um, and, or like I say, the, I, I 
could have sworn that there was someone on like the forums that had essentially done their own and it was just like here's a 3D printed file, go ahead. Um, but yeah, the, the, you you get away with it. I, I mean, I don't think there's any plans currently for the V1 um, to do that, but it definitely I'm all for it. Yeah, I, I, I would totally be down for that. Um, I mean, I, I obviously, I'd, I, we'd, have to, we'd have to find something that we developed that was, um, like, it would, like this, if we had a 3D part, it would have to be something that, you know, could be accommodative, uh, like a readily available off-the-shelf kind of camera kind of thing. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would have no issue with that. I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I don't make the final say on, on what gets published and whatnot. I'm just the guy with long hair and hands to face. So, but I mean, hey, you guys, you basically, you guys tell me what you want and I'm, I'm your guy. I will, I will absolutely yell at whoever I need to yell at to try and make your lives easier. Cause again, I, it legit, I just want to help you guys make cool stuff because you guys make the coolest stuff. Um, and I want to see it. I totally want to see it. So if you, if you have cool stuff, show me. I'm showing you my cool stuff. Show me your cool stuff. Apparently there was a little flicker of the stream there, I guess. Hmm. But yeah, keep uh, questions coming in the chat as you think of things. We've got, uh, yeah, lots, lots more process here, so. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, we're obviously we're printing side two. Um, then it would be take the thing off and uh, flip the board, cure it. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the question is, so I'm trying to think of uh, the timing. Like, do we? Yeah, so we've got just under two hours left for the stream. Uh, baking would be another full hour of that. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, we're, we're just deciding whether or not we want to do TV magic or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's probably worthwhile to do the TV magic yeah, so we can show off riveting. Yeah, because we're going to have to. Yeah. And you can spend more time and, and have a bit more wiggle room if you do have to do any troubleshooting with, uh, with any of the well, there, soldered Well, there is one issue. So the, the, the TV magic boards are riveted. Right. That is an issue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We could, I mean, we could quickly get a second printer in here. I mean, yeah, we, if I we guess wanted I this could, one to heat. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we, yeah. We could set this one to. Yeah, we set, to, set this one to cure. To cure, and then we could rivet and it then, later. Yeah, okay. I mean, that, this is, this is how we, works. this is how you solve problems on the fly. On the fly, yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I got a little too ahead of myself. I was like, let's, just in case, I'm going to prep these. And I over-prepped them. Over-prepped. That's okay. I mean, yeah, there are worse things than being over-prepped. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, that, that actually probably is, um, is the best bet. Um, I mean, so, yeah, realistically, I mean, we probably don't even need to get another machine in here. If we, like, once this is done printing, if, like, if you could just. Oh, I can just take yeah, it just another room. Run, yeah, it, just yeah. take it. Yeah. And then that can be doing its thing, and we can just throw one of these on. Totally. And then we'll, we'll skip the riveting, we'll, and then we'll, we'll come back and rivet um, these guys. It's going to be, yeah. That was my bad. I'm sorry, guys. Yeah. I'll if we do down. the TV magic, we'll have to change the name of this stream to Additive Manufacturing Featuring Magic Mike. <laughs> Dude, I'm not like I didn't know that this was a stream. This is all chat. I didn't know this was too. a thing. I no, I didn't. I didn't know that that. So I had. So I actually like for a, a fair chunk of well, not not a long time, but I actually used to do a lot of like cardistry and like card magic. Like I'm, <laughs> I got super into doing yeah, like yeah, magic tricks and stuff. Um, and yeah, and I used to. I back. I had another job, and this my my boss and her daughter kept calling me Magic Mike, and I just thought it was like a nice, cute thing. And then I tell people, and like I kept getting these looks. Yeah. And I had no idea, but yeah, that that That's happened. That's really funny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then I learned. And then you learned. And then I learned. All right, so yeah, this bad boy is done. Um, although I actually could use a little bit. Of that's no, no, fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so yeah, do you, do you need I can bake it. I mean, okay, cool. Put it in my okay. easy bake oven. Sweet. Easy cure oven. 
Okay, um, so yeah, I will show you guys um, while he's going to do that. Uh, again, apologies, I, I got too ahead of myself. Um, but I've got uh, a board here. Um, this one I've pre-riveted, and you can see it's got the uh, filled-in vias as well. Um, and uh, so that's, uh, that's this guy. Pretty straightforward. Um, one thing that uh, I do recommend, um, I know that on a lot of our documentation, we actually talk about using um, a, a sort of a softer surface when riveting. Um, I found that uh, I actually put these guys down on cement. Um, and I'll show you guys later a little bit um, how I actually do the riveting. But um, it's definitely a thing where I, um, I find that having a, a very firm surface so I can really like hammer these guys down uh, is really, really helpful. I have this other board that I did. I don't know how visible it's going to be. Uh, but these rivets are actually, you can kind of see a little more rounded on the top. Um, and then when I do them on the other side, they didn't actually fold over quite as well. And this was done on sort of a softer surface. I did it on my table. Um, whereas the other ones, I did them on a cement floor. Um, and I, they, you can see they're like really flattened out, which is useful in a lot of ways. Um, one, uh, it's just nice because you, you know that the connection is probably as good as it can be because you've got everything sort of flattened down. But secondly, um, you can um, put a sentence together. Um, oh, because they're flat, they're, they're more flat, they can more easily be uh, uh, avoided by the, uh, uh, by the probe when you're, when you're probing. Because that, that's sort of a, another sort of headache to get through sometimes. Um, some, some of our users will have uh, units that have uh, components on. Like one of the things that we commonly get is people say, hey, I've got a populated board and I want to repair it, print, do something on it. Um, which I'm always sort of a little surprised at based on what the machine is designed for. Um, and yeah, they, they need to get around that. So uh, we do actually have in, in the settings, um, we do actually have a, uh, oh, in the general settings, we have a tool movement option uh, where you can adjust the travel height, which is how high the tool will raise uh, between anything that it does, probing, checking stuff, what, whatever it is, um, it's how high it will raise. By default, it's only one millimeter, but like if you have stuff you need to clear, you could set that really high and then make sure it's going to take a really long time because it's got to go up and down a lot, but that can get you over top of stuff. You don't really need to worry about it in, in this instance. And like I say, having really flat rivets is nice because it, it makes the height more uniform. And that's what you want, really. Um, so we are going to use paste. Uh, this one is a Auklet. I don't know what that is. I don't know what we we have. Like I love I love our naming convention mostly because I started it. Um, but yeah, a lot of these animals I am completely unfamiliar with. So uh, oh right, let's. I'm getting a little ahead of myself. I'm I should load the circuit before I start priming my uh, paste. Okay, that's everything. Oh, nice. I've just given, given the man a lot more work than he, he bargained for. Um, okay. So, as always, we're going to align. Beautiful. I'm gonna I'm gonna break the fourth wall slightly. Um, I actually, I guess it's not really breaking the fourth wall because I'm gonna talk to Nathan. I'm gonna like disappear and talk about what is. I noticed that unit says switch back to 240. Like, is it actually gonna? Is it gonna heat? Is it actually gonna heat or is it? A, oh, it's good. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, I just like I'm like, is, okay, awesome. We're, everyone's on the same page. You guys don't need to worry about it. You're all beautiful people. Boop. Beep, boop, boop. Right. Alignment. Gonna measure. Incredible. Riveting. 
Oh, I should have saved that for under riveting. I didn't even think about it. I just wasted it. I wasted it completely. <sighs> That's rough. All right, all right. Da, da, da. Uh, once lower. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if that was actually caught on camera. That might have been. It might not have been. It's going to be kind of small. So this was actually kind of tricky. The probe fell into the hole. Um, but it was slightly off center, so it actually like, because it's 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 like a, a cone, it, it it forced its way in. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to raise up, which is an option, and then I'm actually going to lower it again and just see how it falls and see if it now I, I adjusted a little bit. So yeah, it fell and it's not quite center. And this is one of the problems with really small holes, is I can't see sort of that like I say that ring around. The, uh, the, the hole between the hole and the probe to see how centered it is. So I'm actually going to, I'm just going to raise it up, move it down one so it doesn't fall in the hole, and then position it over the hole manually so I can get a better alignment. Uh, and like I say, taking, taking the extra time to just make sure that your, uh, your measurements are good, you know, measure twice, cut once, all that jazz, um, that's, that's really going to be key to making sure that Everything goes as smoothly as it can. All right. Okay, we've got our TV Magic off screen printer baking the other board. Amazing. All right. We're going to probe. A lot of probing. Uh, yeah, and so uh, one of the things, I mean, again, this is, sort of goes back to the DFM thing. Um, I, like one thing that I, I've always liked, and this comes from an amateur PCB designer, um, I, I always like to try and challenge myself to sort of do it as efficiently as possible, but one of the things I always kind of like is trying to do it on one layer, mm, right? Yeah. And realistically, I, I totally accept that's not always feasible, and especially, you know, it, it's, I would say probably fairly rarely feasible. Um, and I don't know if this one, if I could have done this on a single layer, uh, but this was sort of explicitly to try and design something that was using rivets and vias and all that jazz. So that's why I wasn't worried about it. Um, it's actually a project. I don't know if we have it up on the site, but one of the, one of, I think it was actually my first project at Volterra was making a, a, a controller for the regular Nintendo. Mm. Um, and I actually printed it on glass. Um, for reason. Oh, I wanted to make it uh, fully transparent. That was the thing. Cool. So I had like a 3D printed like frame and then it had like a glass PCB and then awesome. yeah and it was it was cool I, I, and it was it was a really cool like learning project um, and it actually is really brutal it worked I, I made it. it it worked it assembled I brought in it's actually really funny I brought in a I brought in a regular Nintendo to the office it wasn't this office it was back when we were in the incubator and a little like uh, LCD screen that I had connected to it and I remember I was so happy that like my first project had, had been a success and that it worked and it did the thing. And I probably sat there for half an hour and I just played Blaster Master. And it was awesome. It was just the best thing Amazing. ever. But let this be a lesson. I was so excited that it worked that I didn't really like fully assemble it properly. Like I didn't I didn't like screw everything down and do I was it was a test, but then I got really excited. And the problem is I was playing the game. And I actually ended up like wearing it. Like I, I think I like popped off some some bits, or or I think I, I scratched off something. I can't remember. I damaged it in some way, right. which then broke it, and which was like the most disheartening thing on the planet, because like it was it was working. It was awesome. It was this super cool thing, and um, yeah, I never I never like sort of finished that project. I should probably do that. Yeah, maybe that'd be an opportunity project. It. Yeah, like yeah. I've still got all the things. Like I have the design files, and that and that and the thing was that was a um, that that was a. I was remembering that because we were talking about a single layer, trying to do things on one layer. And the original board, I mean, that's a, that's a board that was going to be designed in like 1980, right? Like, like really, really early. I mean, maybe like 83 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and uh, that board, it's really great if you look at it, if you actually look at the, the, the way the board designed, because at, like Evan was talking about, it was all designed by hand. Like all the traces are wavy lines. Like there's yeah. no like 45 degree angles or any of that stuff. Someone drew it which is nuts. Um, but it is actually a double-sided board because it uses like a, a, a chip with pins in it that come through the board from the other side. Right. But the main board is just one-sided. It just has this chip that goes through. And I found an SMT version of that same chip, and away, away we go. Um, 
but I had to do some redesign stuff, and there's a lot of, like, I had to do a lot of very elaborate routing to, like, go where it needed to go because the pins were flipped and whatnot. Um, and I also, I suppose you could argue cheated a little bit because I ended up using um, a couple really, really large resistors so I could go underneath them. Right. But, yeah, I, I, that's still one layer. Um, so, yeah, I, I mean, it was, a, it was a really cool project. And, uh, yeah, it'd be fun to revive, actually. Yeah. All right, so we've probed. Amazing. Okay, so uh, solder paste. I've primed it. One thing to keep in mind with paste is that we don't do a calibration pattern um, because it would be kind of weird because you get paste all over everything and um, there isn't really a good space to do it. So what I actually like to do whenever I'm going to paste is I will usually select a couple of pads. Um, it, it can be whatever you like. I usually do something that's fairly big. Um, in this particular case, I'm doing something that's fairly big because we don't have anything really small, but if you had um, very, very fine pitch legs on an IC or something, yeah. I would totally try pasting those. Um, but for this guy, I'm, I'm just gonna hit these pads and we're gonna see how it looks. If it looks good, then we'll do the rest. Um, of course, you can also just start the thing and then adjust as you need, and then once it's over, if there are any that weren't printed properly, you can highlight them and then, and then re paste them, and that's fine. And with a board like this, probably not a bad route either. Yeah. Uh, just because there are so many to do. You yeah. can just uh, go through them and then fix the ones you need to fix. But totally. um, I love this method too. Just select a couple, mm. get it right. It's a little quicker to iterate. Mm. Uh, and then you can just, you don't have to worry about the rest of the board. You just go. Uh, so uh, one thing I suppose to mention as well is that we clearly didn't have any issue with the... Um, we didn't have any issue with the height mapping. Um, we probed everything and it was fine. Uh, I think I'm printing too high, actually. That looks better. Um, we didn't have any issue with, with the height mapping, so I didn't have to make any adjustments there. Um, yeah, and then if, if an issue had popped up, it would have shown up as a red, yeah. uh, a red error and would have told us why. Yeah, it would have said that there's a problem, shows us where it, and the, the thing to keep in mind is that the software will tell you where it thinks the error is. Like, there's no guarantee that that's actually the spot, but it's comparing different probe points and saying, these two are far enough apart that I'm upset about it. Yeah, and, and the way it gives those is one will always be zero, uh, and that zero is the lowest one. Um, and it bases everything else, uh, everything around it off of that. So that's good to keep in mind as well. Okay, uh, I think that's actually pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm going to need to do this. But one thing, I, as, as I'm sure all of you have been riveted from the start of this stream, we've been here the entire time. Um, one thing to, to mention is that uh, I said before, one thing that, that had to sort of be beat into my head was that pretty much always raising the print height is, is better. Like that's what you want to do. Um, one thing you can actually do to confirm this, if you're trying to print, um, obviously be very careful if you're going to do this uh, because it is a machine. But uh, sometimes if I'm having an issue with a print, like for example that pad, I might actually just press down on the board a little bit and see if that has an impact on how much ink is coming out. Um, because you really don't need a large difference in height to get a change. Um, so sometimes just that, that little bit of pressure is enough to like give you just enough space and all of a sudden everything's working really Absolutely. well. Um, so that, that is a thing that I will do to test sometimes to see if, if there's a problem. And, and sometimes um, I have had issues, and this is one of the reasons that I like to set a, a, a smaller probe pitch so I have a, a more sort of resolute, high resolution um, uh, height map, is that sometimes if, I, if, if I'm just using five and maybe there's some sort of discrepancy on the board but there was no error caught because of where the pads are or what have you, you might find that you print almost everything fine and then like one area is just not really good. Yep. I, when I'm printing that, I would totally just put a little bit of pressure on the board and see if it's fixing it. Okay, cool, raise, raise the print height a little bit and either just do that section or maybe you can do the whole thing. Like it's, it's possible the rest is slightly too low but not enough that it's a problem. Um, so. Yeah, yeah and, and your only issue with uh, printing too high if you, if you go too far uh, is just, yeah, like your material is not gonna stick. Yeah. So. Uh, you're not going to hurt you're, anything. You're not going to have a nozzle crash or anything like that going higher, um, whereas you will if you just try and push the limits lower. Totally, totally. 
that's very, very good to keep in mind. Um, cool. Um, yeah, so we're just pasting. Um, yeah, this guy is it's pretty, like I say, it's a, it's a fairly simple board. Um, one thing it, you do want to keep in mind, especially if you've got a lot of, like perhaps I, I try and keep things fairly neat, but I, I do think that perhaps I could have not lined things up quite as they are, um, because sometimes it can be, just looking at it, it's not necessarily obvious where two pads, the direction in which two pads connect, whether it's like a horizontal thing or a vertical thing. Right. Um, so that, that was probably not the best design choice on my part. Uh, but like I say, I, I, whenever I'm doing, whenever I'm populating a board, I will have the schematic open and the, 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 the design um, in whatever CAD software I'm using so that I can take a look, verify my things, and, and go through. Um, and we'll be, we'll be doing that um, once this guy's printed, and you'll be able to see um, my process. Like, the process I use, I'm going to be using is not great um, because I, like, it's, it's a little bit slower than it needs to be uh, because I go sort of th through one thing at a time rather than saying, hey, where are all the, like, 10K resistors and putting all the 10K resistors down? I do it one, one component. For something bigger, like when we like our internal stuff that we do, absolutely, I highlight every single of the same component and put all those components down. Um, this one, there are only a couple components that get reused a bunch, uh, like uh, uh, one the the point oh one capacitors and I think uh, like ten k resistors and stuff. Like there's a couple commons, but a, a fair number of them are unique, so it's yeah. fine. And again, this is a prototype. Yeah. If we were designing for an uh, an end. Uh, go to market type board. Um, we probably would tidy things up a little, make it very clear yeah. uh, which parts are where, and, and make it easy for yeah, have a silk screen and, and all anybody that. To, yeah. to populate it without thinking too hard. So totally, um, yeah, it's just part of the process. Totally, totally. So do you, do you have do you have a a, a fuzz pedal? I don't. Really? I'm waiting for No, it's thing. fine. That's, yeah. that's great. I just, I'm like, yeah. I don't know. I don't know what equipment you, uh, you, you normally use. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. That's the next stream. Yeah, that's it's next gonna stream. Be, yeah. It's going to yeah. be Nathan's gear tour. Tour of my gear. Yeah. 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 That's, <clears throat> I'm in. I'll watch that. I'll totally watch that. That'd be sick. It'd be probably just as long. Really? <laughs> oh, man. Well, I mean, if somebody's watching a gear stream, you're going to want to go in depth, right? So. I know, I know what I want to see next. That'd be awesome. I'm super into that. Um, yeah. This isn't the best uh, I've seen in terms of putting down pace, but it's not, I'm not concerned by it. Um, I mean, obviously, it's, it's really nice if you have the, like, really crisp corners and all that jazz. Uh, I probably would do a little bit better if I used the metal nozzles, but it's not, it's not really worth it in this, in this context. Um, so I'm, just, I'm fine with it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's good. Yeah, there's solder paste on there. Yeah. Oh, there's definitely paste on there. Absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, so that we got paste on it. Now we can pull the board off, and we can move over. Mike's to population station. Population station. That's yep. That's what they call it. That's absolutely what they call it. So. This is where things, I hope, are not going to become, like, insanely boring for you guys. Because this is just going to be me uh, populating a board. Um, so I've, I've got my uh, actual design up. Let me just uh, make some, I should already have these mostly sorted. But I just, what I like to do um, whenever I'm doing populating a board is separate all my resistors, my capacitors, and then basically everything else. Uh, so that I don't have to worry about it. I totally thought that was Shelly giggling at me, and I realized it was just my chair squeaking. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, oh, what, am I doing something hilarious? But no, no, just, just my chair. Yeah. I, was, I was excited. I was like, oh, I'm being entertaining. People are going to love it. Um, nope, just a chair. So we're going to populate this board, uh, and then we're going to do reflow on the V1, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sweet. Yep. Um, and actually, well, we're mostly going to do reflow on the V1. So, um, cool. Don't worry, it, it's going to make sense in a second. I will explain. So, uh, one thing I have found, because um, this does happen sometimes, is specifically with the big like electrolytic 
cap or whatever, the, the, the big guy that we have. Um, yeah, you guys can see my screen. Um, this guy sometimes, I think because he's so big, he dissipates a fair amount of heat. And so he doesn't often, sometimes I've had issues where he doesn't reflow perfectly. Yeah. So I have my heat gun here. Um, I absolutely love having a heat gun. A heat gun is your best friend. Um, if, if, you know, you had, if I had to pick between, if I could only have like one tool for like making boards, I would absolutely take a heat gun over a soldering iron. 100%. I love a heat gun. It is so useful for so many things. So, and you can fight me in the comments on that if you disagree. Um, so, let's just grab some components and start getting to. Um, this one's actually, I'm, I'm actually not going to check two of these because I, I know about both of these 12K resistors. Um, this, this is actually a, a Aaron special from my friend. Uh, he suggested that I add an extra resistor. I don't remember why. Probably, probably just make it cooler. For reasons. For reasons. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he, he gave me some advice and some tweaks. So this is, like I say, if, if you guys check out that, that pedal online, um, uh, uh, Guitar Gadget something. I, I totally forgot the name. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. GeneralGuitarGadgets.com. GeneralGuitarGadgets.com. Um, Super cool website. They do some really cool stuff. They have a lot. You can see their schematics and whatnot. Um, and this is very, very similar. Uh, there are a couple tweaks, a couple differences uh, in it. But um, yeah, super, super really cool. And there's a, there's a ton of stuff. There's a ton of, of sites that have cool designs and whatnot. And um, these guys are cool too. They even have little kits you can buy. So uh, even if you didn't have a V1, you wanted to make a cool kit, you could do that. Um, so I definitely... Uh, I'm, I'm really into the whole, like, homebrew, DIY, make your own cool stuff uh, scene, which I think you kind of have to be to work here. Like, it's, it's kind of a rule. Yeah, it's, it's a little bit baked into the DNA. Aren't yeah. you, like, fixing yeah. a sweet Japanese truck or something? Yeah. How's that going? Oh, it, it, it's running great. Is it? Yeah. Did yeah, you drive it today? I didn't, no. Why uh, did you? Had a lot going on no. in my brain. So Dude, I'm all I want to I want to I, I want to <laughs> ride in that. I'm so excited to see it. Yeah, I could pick it up later. But yeah, it's a '93 uh, Daihatsu Hijet. That's so cool, man. Almost 30. That's so cool. Yeah, I yeah, love it. Fun. That's so awesome. I'm oh, yeah, I'm a huge fan of that. Just that kind of stuff, and it's just that's that's the world I want to be in. So yeah, my issue is I collect hobbies. So oh, dude. I'm with you, man. Oh, I just, I get super into stuff and it just, I get, I get way too invested. I get hyper fixated. And then my wife knows to just like, just, just don't just, she just, she's really cool about it though. She doesn't, she doesn't hit me. <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I ask. It's a low bar. Well, yeah, hey, man, I'll take it. I'll take it. If she'll put up with my like really weird hobbies. Like I got, I got really back into yo-yos again for a while. Nice. Bought like a ridiculously expensive yo-yo, and she's just like, "Okay, I I chose this." Yep. This is great. Ugh. When I was doing my like magic, card magic stuff, I can't tell you how many like bespoke decks of cards I bought. Right. And like she just didn't. She was fine with it, I think. I have a lot of decks of cards. Yeah. In future streams we should get a progress bar for uh, component placement. Oh, nice. That would yes. be sweet. I'm super into that. I'm yeah. super into that. Oh yeah. I'm really curious if I'm actually going to run out of parts. I shouldn't, and technically, we're not. I, I brought um, with me uh, those other boards that I showed you guys earlier of the like failed attempts, and they do have components on them. So in the event that I didn't have a component that I needed, I can pull one off one of those boards. But I should have enough. I feel like we might have a supply of oh, yeah. some stuff here <laughs> yeah, in the so office. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we yeah. probably have one or two. Although, we don't do a whole heck of a lot with 1206. Because everybody has to be fancy engineer and use tiny little components. And it's like, oh, look at me. 
They say that all the time. I promise you. Um, all right. Populating boards. Okay. Oh, yeah, this is that big, well, not big physically, but, like, high-capacity resistor. Oop. All right. Oof. Riveting content wasn't riveting enough. Right? I know. <laughs> I know. Well, this is one of the things. This is why it's like there's there are different. They're all different types of boards, and like you can sort of go with something that's really simple, or you can go with something that's got like a million components on it. And like kind of finding that balance is is a bit tricky because like this is going to take a minute, my friends. I do apologize, uh, but that's how it's got to be. Cool projects have tons of components. That's just the way it works. I suppose. I mean, that, that would actually be like a really cool challenge. It's like design, make the like coolest thing with the fewest components. Yeah. Right? You lose points for every yeah. component you use. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'd actually, I'd really love to do some like, like V1 or like Volterra events with, for, for users where, it, yeah, it's like come up with a cool project and you know, we'll hook you up with, with ink or like give you a printer if you, if you do the cool thing, like whatever it is. Um, I'd love to do some like really fun challenges and like just really get the community involved with. Yeah, V1 hack day type thing. Right? That'd be like, cool, yeah. There's so many cool things that, like I say, our users come up with that uh, I just, yeah, I wanna, I wanna showcase it and I wanna, I wanna see how they, all the cool stuff, because it's just the coolest. Oof. All right. Got to put everything back in its nice little anti-static bag. Nice and safe. There are two tools that I think are absolutely essential for populating a board, and I've only brought one of them. The first, as I'm, <laughs> the first, as I'm sure you guessed, is tweezers. Tweezers are absolutely essential and your best friend. And good tweezers too. Yes. Don't okay. Yes. Keep out on tweezers. Don't. Don't. Yeah. Do. Do not. Do not. <laughs> but. And keep your tweezers clean. Well, yes. And actually, you could kind of cheap out on tweezers. With with the with the the, um, because the second best tool that you can have is half a set of tweezers. <laughs> I have I have a set of these and they they just they, they broke off so I just have this like metal poker thing yeah. and it's so useful like it's unbelievably useful a placer and a poker yeah like I there's I it's my favorite thing and I just I didn't bring it today I mean I'm not gonna need it but yeah that's one of those that is just unbelievably useful and I just I broke tweezers accidentally and yeah I use them all the time for so many things so. Highly recommended that you break your tools. That's a good way to find the limit of the tool. That, that, yep, that's what it was. This is just testing. It's important. All right. And I mean, I realize, I don't know, maybe someone in the chat knows, because you guys are all real smart. Um, I, I mean, I always put my, my resistors right way up. I mean, you don't need to. But this is one thing that has always bugged me, and like not being a, oh, let me just check these. These are the JFATs, right? Yeah. Um, not being the, the super smart guy. I've, I've always been super confused as to why, like resistors have their little numbers on them. Yeah. Right? And you can tell how much, what the value is. Super useful. Capacitors, beige. Like, surely we have the technology to put a value on a service mount capacitor, and yet we do not. But then the people who are used to 
the old way of doing no, it. No, no. Won't be happy. No, those people are the worst. <laughs> I'm calling you out. Anyone, anyone who is, thinks that, no. Fight me in the comments. We should absolutely have information on all of our parts about what they are. Are you kidding me? Like this little guy right here, he's got all this little writing in it. You could like read what it is. And yet I've got this capacitor that's huge next to it. No idea. Yeah. If I took the wrong thing out of the bag, GG. That's it. Yeah. One, one thing for uh, the folks in, uh, in the stream watching mm. who uh, love to do the Wikipedia deep dives and just rabbit hole for days. <laughs> right. Uh, learning how <laughs> the PCB industry got to where it is now is super fascinating. You can just like read about it for days. Uh, and also, I was going to mention this earlier when we were talking about Gerber files, mm. seeing oh, like, yeah. why Gerber files are the way they are and right? like, how they originated using like actual apertures of lights for exposure and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Super fascinating stuff. It is really cool. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, certainly not for everyone. <laughs> no. No. Some dense content. Man, I was actually, I was just reading this thing uh, the other day about how metal detectors detect non-magnetic metals, which like, I mean, I guess they, they do. I just, I sort of assumed that, like it's when you, magnets. Yeah, yeah like yeah, when yeah. you go through a metal, because it's, it's using magnetic fields, and I was like, oh, well then it can only detect like iron and nickel and all that jazz. It's like, no, 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 no. Just like the lenses law, and it's really cool. I was reading this whole thing. I was, it was really fascinating. I was like, oh, that's, that's really neat. And I'm sure I, I could have asked Matt, and he would have just been like, yeah. And he just would have explained it. That's what he hmm. does. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's my tangent for the day. That'll be my uh, next Wikipedia rabbit hole. Nice. Yeah. Always looking for a good one. All right. Yeah, I am actually, I don't know, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens. Because um, I'm worried that I'm actually going to run out of these caps. But I'll pull them if I need them. Bop, 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 bop. It's like take your kid to work day, but it's take the internet to my work day. <laughs> you guys are all super excited to be here, which you should be, because this is going to be great. It's going to it's going to pay off in the end, because Nathan's going to play a sweet bass solo. Do you know what you're going to play for us? No, I didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it. Are you going to take requests? <laughs> yeah, we'll see how active the chat is. Yeah, man. I mean, chat. If you got, if, you, if there's, there's we, some. Yeah, we need to get to like 60 viewers for requests to happen. No oh, man, and you guys, if you got if you got something you want to hear, you you tell us, and then I'll guilt him into doing it. That that will be my contribution to you. Oof. Well, what were you playing earlier? You're doing something. It sounded kind of familiar. What was I playing earlier? I, that li oh, I literally I was playing, just said that. Uh, I was playing some Audio Slave. Was it? That's what that was, yeah. Oh. I think it was Cochise. Oh. Um, yeah, and then just playing some, just some riffs and stuff, you know. Classic riffs. Yeah. That's how you know a real musician. They say riff? Oh, get out of here. I don't talk about riffs. I'm not cool enough. So I guess the real question, the real, the real, that's on everybody's mind. Why did you decide to give up trumpet for bass? Uh, who says you can't have both? I don't see a trumpet here. Well, I don't see a, a trumpet pedal being made. <laughs> oh, man. That'd be cool. Yeah. I'd be really interested. Like, I, I mean, one of the things about music that's always been sort of fascinating is the, how they, um, like, the technology hasn't really changed for a lot of, like, orchestral stuff. Right. right. You don't really see, like, the development, but then you take a look at, like, guitars and, like, like there's a... I, I, I don't know. Electric violin's pretty pretty advanced. Yeah. I don't think two set would be too happy about you saying that. <laughs> I, think that I think that's uh, sacrilegious, as they'd say. 
but uh, yeah, it's just it's um, you see like like nowadays. I mean, I I I saw the like the dark glass from uh, like the uh, what's it the one from uh, Music Man the Stingray with that's got like the dark glass built into it. Mm, yeah. A dark ray, that's what it's called, right? And it's like yeah, now they're they're building effects into um, into the into the things now, and it's like. We could do that, yeah. Like or like Matt Bellamy's, uh, yeah, like right with the touch thing and like yeah, yeah, yeah. That thing stuff. is nuts. Yeah. That thing is super cool. But yeah, but it's like we could do that. Like, I mean, we have the technology right here. We could just start making some pretty sweet devices. Just saying. So, yeah, I'd I'd really be interested in exploring more more sound content um, or like music related content. Because I think it's I think it's a really cool application for the V1, and I think I and think it's I think so too. Yeah, it's it's accessible. Like it's, yeah, uh, and and you get that good like a usable product at the end. Totally, totally. Yeah, I think that's sort of the the big thing, and it's just I think I think there are a lot of I don't I mean I don't like to use the term like markets, right? But I think that. For example, the sort of the market of musicians and whatnot, I think they're less likely to sort of stumble across the V1. Totally. Like, like and, and, and like I say, we do have we do have like people like companies who have bought the V1 and, and are talking to us about stuff that that have um, that have found out about us and, and like our stuff and all that jazz. But it's to me is not an obvious melding like it's not it's not something when I see the V1 I'm like oh this will be great for musicians right right so I think it's really cool when we find these sort of like applications that aren't sort of the immediately obvious thing I think those are really fun to do yeah. um, and really sort of like yeah what if you are like a guitar player or bass player and you go by that off-the-shelf pedal yeah but you're like I really wish it could do just like push this a little bit like this is the right? sound that so close to the sound I want, but I just want to adjust it this way. Like, yeah, there's there's still a, a fairly big uh, knowledge gap to, to get to the point sure. of understanding what you need to adjust to get there. Uh, but with the the community on the internet, like I feel like you could, and then with a V1, you could totally put together your exact sound. Right. Yeah. There's just there's and have so fun things. doing it. Well, that's the other thing, right? I mean, it, yeah. I mean. Obviously, not everybody wants to be taking tweezers and putting little bits on a board. I get that. I totally get that. But I think there are a lot of people that do. And I think there are a lot of people that don't know they do, but totally do. That too, yeah. Um, okay. I have actually run out of a component. Oops. So I'm going to steal a component. Got my little helping hands. So helpful. <sighs> I got this set to, I think, 250. Should be plenty. It's more than we need. Oh, man. People are waving at me. Tell man. I mean, it doesn't, it, it, this is, OK, it's fine. It's fine. I, will, I trust in your ability to lead me. We're hot, we're hot. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm I, I double checked this because I, I ordered enough parts for like three boards or whatever. And I don't I must have done something wrong because I, I remember running low on these guys. And I don't know why I did. Because it seems like I shouldn't. Oh wait. I need to double check a thing real quick because I might have just embarrassed myself. Um, I'm looking for, is it this guy? No, it's not that guy. Where am I? Uh, right there. Where is, okay, I'm, I will proceed. 
Um, I know that there is one um, capacitor that I often mess up when building this board. Because it's, it's, I forget what the value is, but it's like one decimal off, and I've messed that up a couple times. Mm. Which is why I think I actually ran out of that particular capacitor, because it's like 0 0.01 instead of 0 0.1 or whatever. And there's only one on the board. Um, but, uh, yep. Just got to make sure I got the right guy there. All right. What's this? 10K. Whoop. How's the cure coming on the other one? Oh, it's coming. I still see the red lights. We're, uh, we're in cool down now, though. So. That's good. Yeah. So we're almost done with the TV magic. Well, I mean, I'm, this will still be, this will be the one we finish, so. Oh, totally. But everybody wants to see hammer time. Do they? All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Okay, what's that? Cool. Uh, this guy, 15. Any action on stream? Uh, just somebody mentioning about uh, the competition idea. Oh, yeah? They also think it would be super cool to have a, a V1 challenge limited to schools. You could have different uh, size class for the different board sizes, that kind of oh, thing. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah, that would be, that'd be wicked. That would be awesome. I'm super into that. One thing I hate is when they use different units. Like in the design, it's it's 0 .0047 nanofarads, and here I've got 4,700 picofarads. I don't like doing that. Don't make me convert. I've got a great project idea for our next stream. Oh, uh, we're not sponsored by Domino's, <laughs> but we could build a hardware Domino's tracker that uh, connects to your order. So you can have like visualizations of the stages they're on and know when your pizza gets delivered. But don't they, don't they already do that? I don't know, do oh, they have a hardware one? No, no but they've got like, like I, the I, website, but then you don't have to keep the website up. It's just like you put it on your TV. Oh, I see, oh, I get you, I got so you. So you yeah, watching yeah, yeah. your movie okay. and you can yes. see, oh yeah, pizza's oh, on its way. Totally. And then we could order a pizza and see if it works. You know what? I love everything about this plan. This, this is a delightful plan. C11, that's the one. This is the one. This is the one that gets me. Because it's 0 .01 yep. instead of the 0 .1. That'll get you. Right? It's frustrating. What are you laughing about? Uh, all right. Where is it? It's <laughs> yeah, chat called us out. Uh, we must not have had lunch. <laughs> <laughs> fair. <laughs> totally fair. Oh, okay, cool. Man, I got, I got a little turned around on my board there, and I thought I'd just put the wrong component somewhere. That was going to be a really bad time. Uh, okay. <sighs> Classic chat. Yeah, I might get pizza tonight. We're doing all right for time, right? Oh, we're doing great. Okay. Yeah. Just making sure. We're heading into the last hour. Okay. Cool. 
because yeah, we got a reflow, and then I got to kind of put these components in, uh, and hopefully it works, and we don't have to debug too much. But who knows? Who knows? But yeah, I actually had a, um, I don't know if we ever, I don't, I don't know if they end up getting a unit, but I, I actually recall very distinctly having uh, in, in support chat, I had some company that I, I actually don't remember the name of um, come in and they're like, hey, we make boutique pedals and we like, this, we explicitly, this is what we want to do the thing. And um, I pushed really hard to like, you know, get them hooked up and like find out whatever they needed because I was, I was like super invested in the idea. But I don't know if they ever ended up getting a unit because they hadn't. They weren't getting technical support because they already had one. They were like asking questions about right, right. about using it and whatnot. Um, See, so yeah, I don't. I don't know how that turned out because I'm not sales. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it was it was cool. Um, it was really neat. Two K. I usually don't have an audience for this. It's a little weird. I'm usually just, you know, at home, alone. Well, no, not alone. I have a cat. The cat's annoying me. And I'm trying to solder things, and she's jumping in my lap. As cats do. Kitties are not solder safe. No. It's brutal, man. Um, OK. And then, is that the? Yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, do, 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 do. That's this one, I believe. It is. Whoop. Yeah. Okay. One of the other problems with using, um, I, I decided to make all the components uh, 1206 just to make my life a little bit easier in terms of, like, um, when I'm putting down the pads and whatnot on the in the CAD software. Yeah. But the problem is, like, if I had, you you can also make your your components different sizes, which then means they're more identifiable. So like these diodes, I know exactly um, where they go because the pads are bigger. Right. Uh, but since everything's 1206, it's just like, that could be literally anything. Uh, oh, I think I need another point one. OK, uh, are these both? I think these are both point one. Yes, they are. And then that's 100. That's 470. OK, cool. So I'm going to need to steal two components. Uh, but we are almost done with assembly. This is the force of me. Is the other board cool? It's super cool. Nice. <laughs> nice. No, I think we're pretty close. Okay. Because um, what I'm thinking is we're a minute away. We can we can start the reflow on the other one, and um, just to sort of the, the sort of proof of concept with that one, um, I can uh, hit hit the vias with the multimeter, and nice. we'll just we'll just see yeah. if the uh, if the rivet list via has worked out all right. Great idea. Cool. Actually, let's, let's just grab that giant resistor first. I just love giant package resistors because you can sneak traces under them. And I just think that's awesome. That was actually one of the first things that Chewy showed me. Um, it was really funny because he, when, well, actually when I first started, so Chewy, Chewy's one of our founders for anyone who isn't in the know. Um, 
Uh, Chewy is short for Jesus. Also, I guess, worth noting, we all call him Chewy, but like, <laughs> his actual name is Jesus. Jesus Zosaya, which I love to say like that, because his name is fantastic. His full name's even better, but I, I, won't, I won't say it, because, you know, it's too good. Anyway, um, I remember when I, when I first started, and I, I talked actually about, I was like, oh, maybe I can make a controller. And, um, and I talked about like doing it on glass, and he was the one that's like, oh, well, you, you gotta do it on one layer then. And he was like, mm, I don't know. I don't know how you do this. And um, I was trying to figure out how to route it, and like, I just couldn't. Like, there, was, there wasn't really a way to do it. And he's like, oh, you're gonna need to use jumpers. And I remember he helped me with like the first prototype, and he took the like the tiniest, tiniest little wires you've ever seen, yeah. and did these like tiny little jumps. And <laughs> I don't remember I don't remember who it was, but someone was just like just use big resistors and like route under them. Um, but uh, yeah, that was that was one of the things that he taught me that I was I always thought was really good. So I I, I always love using giant components to uh, route my wires under. Yeah, and uh, if people making the Hello World ever notice, uh, we do some routing underneath the, the main IC on the Hello World board, too. Yep, so, yep, yeah. absolutely. Good, uh, good example of that. Yeah, it's one of those things that, like, I think it's, it's really effective. Um, you want to be a little careful with certain components. Like, and, I mean, this is why things like BGA are really problematic, because if, the ra if, if you've got pads underneath the thing, um, you can definitely run into some troubles because of that. Uh, but... For the most part, it should be fine. All right, so we're taking two more caps off that board. Um, and then, I believe, we should be good to go. Um, so, I can put the board back on V1 for reflow. Uh, and, oops, move our components out of the way. Beautiful. Okay, so real quick, we can, st well, I'll, I'll get the software running, um, and we can go to the heat step, and I'm going to select reflow, because that's what we're going to do. Uh, select our material, select start. Um, oh, right. It doesn't like it if you have the probe attached. I've never really understood why you can't have the probe attached, but that's fine. And we're going to start, and it's going to heat up, and everything's going to be great. Uh, Cool, so that's gonna take 20 minutes. So if we go come back to my little workspace. Um, and with that 20 okay, minutes, uh, most oh. of that time is cool down. Yeah, yeah, fair amount is, is cool down. Yeah. Um, so I've got, I've got the, the board that we, we, the one that we have printed from start to finish so far today um, with, the, with the rivets, or with the rivetless vias rather. Um, and so I'm just gonna take the tape off. go and this is looking pretty good of course so we've got a question from chat yeah about uh, whether or not you can solder a through hole component without using a rivet uh technically technically yes but don't do it <laughs> like it, it, yeah it just makes the soldering so much more difficult yeah because um, the the rivet adds is a nice thermal kind of mass yep. that that helps the solder Totally. Uh, wick to it a little quicker, uh, and it gives it a little bit more of a mechanical. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the, the big one. The big real. Yeah, the, the big, big one is the mechanical advantage, but yeah, realistically, I mean, with the ink because it's additive, like you can run into issues with leaching silver from it when you heat it. Like that's why you want to be careful about the temperatures and all that kind of stuff. And like, yeah, you can do it, but given the risk, once you once you're like this this deep in a board. It's not worth it. Like, because if, if I mess up one of these and then I have to, like, route a wire or, like, do something, it's like, just put a rivet in it or, yeah. or what have you. It's going to be a better time. Yeah. Rivets will take you so. a couple minutes and yeah. you're going to have a more sure result. So, okay, so that's heating. Let's get my, uh, my multimeter good to go. I hate how these things always tangle up. All I want in life is a multimeter with wireless... <laughs> Probes like that. That's what I want. Yeah, I, I like that's that's the dream. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull this guy up. I'm going to take a look, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the bottom layer specifically, and I'm actually going to hide all but that layer, because um, that way I can just see what I need to be touching. So nice. Yeah. So let's see. We've got 
this guy should connect to this. Oh, and it doesn't. Okay, we've got a problem. Okay, so that one doesn't. Yeah, my probe is working. Okay, this one. Oh, wait. Am I, I'm, am I a dumb guy? I'm a dumb guy. Okay, let's, right? Okay, that does connect. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm a really dumb guy. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Resume. Yeah, so you'll know that I probed this guy up here, which, like, yes, it should connect based on that, but that's one that's supposed to have a rivet in it, which is why it's not showing anything, because the rivet is what connects the top to the bottom. So me touching the bottom, that, yeah, I'm just... Yeah, that's, I'm, that's not the smartest move. More ever. riveting content. Yeah, we're, yeah. Okay, so um, now this one, this pad should connect to this. Yes, it does. Cool. Uh, that one goes to a thing. This, this one up here should go to this guy. Awesome. And then this guy should go to this guy, I believe. Did I? Yeah, I think these two are supposed to be connected. Oh, no, they're not. Wow. I'm bad at reading my own design. All these little squiggles in the middle got me confused. But no, okay, yeah. so the ones that are supposed to be connected are, in fact, connected. Squiggles will get you. Ugh. Yeah, sometimes I'm just dumb. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but what you can do is you can always just test the trace, and then without touching the outside of the, of the via, Make sure you just touch the inner section to see if there's actually a connection that um, is being made. And all of these are testing well. Because the real trick is actually just making sure the ink gets sort of over that lip, um, the little edge between the hole and the, the top of the exactly. hole. So, so that guy's good. Or at least he's good up to that point. Uh, how's the reflow? Looks like it happened. Yeah, it's still, so um, if we can switch back to the camera over here. Sorry to like jump you around like that. Um, it does look like the big cap is a little not as shiny as I would like it to be. Um, so I'm just going to hit it with a little hot air. Just get it the rest of the way. Give it a good talking to. Right? Yeah, these big guys can be kind of a pain sometimes. Okay, so that's. Make sure everything else looks good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. One, I, I'm one of the reasons that I'm. Uh, doing this right now is simply that the board, whenever you're reflowing, you get it up to a soak temperature before you, before you actually get it up to temperature for reflow. And so it's actually easier for me to just hit it with a tiny little bit of air right now rather than take it off after it's cooled yeah. and then reheat yeah, it all the, the way. The board is preheated. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So that's actually a really good time. doesn't take as much time or energy to get it up to that. Totally. Temp. Totally. So we're going to let that cool a little bit and I will um, show you some riveting. Um, there should be a large board, which is right here. And then I lost it. Yeah. All right. Rivets. All right. So rivets are actually pretty straightforward. Um, you know, grab a rivet, put it in a hole. Uh, now there are a couple ways that you can do this. Um, I have seen some people that like really just do one rivet at a time. Uh, that is definitely a route. I'm not a fan of that. Uh, I like to put all my rivets in and then what I'll do is I will uh, I'll then be able to sort of hammer them down one at a time. Uh, one thing that is also useful, which I can recommend, is in the event that you're doing rivets and you've got um, you've got a bunch of them, for example. It can actually be really useful to put tape, uh, use that same painter's tape, and just put it over the rivets. Um, because especially if you're, if you're sort of knocking them down with a hammer and the, and the, the deforming tool, um, sometimes your board might bounce a little bit. And if it bounces a little too much, the rivets actually, if, that haven't yet been sort of punched down, 
they might pop out. So putting a little bit of tape just to make sure everything stays right where it needs to be can actually be kind of useful. So some something to keep in mind. Um, I'm probably not going to do that here. I actually find like I I, I mean I'm I'm weird I suppose. Um, I actually like doing um, populating boards and like putting the resistors down and and doing all that kind of stuff. I think that's really fun. Um, but I also really I find I know some users get a little more um, find that the riveting is a bit tedious, um, but I actually really like it. It's, it's just like, it's like the world's easiest jigsaw puzzle. On that note, chat's uh, wondering, yeah. uh, out of all the prints you've done, what's your favorite part of PCB assembly process? And you can't say when it works. Nice. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it's kind of tough. I mean, it's, I, this is going to sound really bad. Um, it's kind of tricky. So I, the thing I actually enjoy the most is I actually really like debugging. The problem is I actually just don't know enough. Um, so I like debugging when I sort of know what I'm doing. Um, right. I, I mean, I used to do, I used to do the technical support here and I, I was, I, I was, you know, I, I know the V1 super well, so I was very good at it and I could drill down to the problems really quickly. So when I have a really good sense of the board um, and what it's supposed to do, I actually really like, you know, hitting with the multimeter, figuring out what's going on, and, and I, know, I know how to go about solving this puzzle. Um, but yeah, if I'm, if I'm on a board that I didn't design or I don't really know that much about, I actually find that to be the worst part. Mm, because yeah. yeah, if you don't, if you're just sort of, you know, crawling in the dark, um, and you don't know what you're looking at or, or what it should be doing, what to expect, you're just pulling your hair out trying to figure out why is this doing or not doing something. Definitely. Um, so yeah, that, that is, 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 so it's both my favorite and least favorite depending on the context. Um, so, and that's why, like I say, I was really happy to have my friend Aaron give me a hand with, uh, with this guy because when, when I was struggling, I was definitely sort of crawling in the dark and I didn't really know what I should be doing and he was able to sort of turn me the right way around and get me get me going so uh, all right so I'm just gonna push all these down a little bit make sure that they're all seated um, and then we're just gonna take a bigger piece of FR4 put it down and now we've got our thing so I am actually rivet sandwich now rivet sandwich so I'm actually going to take a little bit of tape. I'm not going to tape down the rivets themselves, but I'm going to tape down the board. Um, just because, like I say, when you're, when you're riveting, sometimes your board will bounce. Yeah, Whoops. Keep and, the bounces from happening. Yeah, and you just don't want that. <laughs> and that way everything stays down. You don't have to worry about it. Now the real question, and this is where producer Shelly is going to be maybe really mad at me, is I'm going to potentially start to rivet right now. And... This table is a very hollow table, and so she might grasp at her ears and scream as soon as I start pounding on this. Are you ready? Also the world's biggest hammer for this. Right? Thank you. Yeah, I sort of covered up your lines. Okay, we good? All right. Are we, we're not, we're not peeking too bad, we're not? No? All right, all right, if chat's, if chat's not upset, like I can, I can continue. Just creating a visual earthquake. Great. Yep. <laughs> this is great. This is, this is great. Everybody loves this. Like, is my, is my mic's not like going bananas? No, it's fine. Okay. Maybe a little loud, but I, mean, right. I, I can turn you down. Well, whatever. Right. I just I don't want to upset the chat with like my wife is. I'm sure it's like P, it's PCB ASMR. I've been doing this all weekend <laughs> in the basement, and I'm sure my wife is going nuts.
Oops. We're almost done, guys. Oops. All right. I think that's everything it's actually pretty good nice put away my my sweet big giant hammer now it's probably a good time to mention that if uh, somebody is a v1 user and they find themselves using rivets a lot yeah they can buy a riveting tool yes uh, they exist pcb riveting tools uh, and that will <laughs> eliminate a lot of the noise uh, and hammer swinging it's just a little kind of press basically yeah, just a little arbor press, um, and you can. And the nice thing as well is you also get more even pressure. So, because one of the concerns that you will have when doing something like this is the concern with um, uh, the impact damage that you might have to the board. Like if yeah. the if the, uh, the ink is too um, inflexible. What's the word I'm looking for? Brittle. Brittle. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's too brittle. You worry about it cracking or something like that. Um, that can be problematic. So. Yeah, we're That's in hour three. If we can't remember words exist, I think we're safe <laughs> right? now. Yeah. yeah, we're doing we're doing okay. All right, so uh, are we flow? Are we still like crazy hot? He's 40 seconds away. It's fine. All right, we're good. We're good. Okay, cool. Okay, so um, we've got our board. It's been reflowed. Um, just taking a look at it. Looks pretty good. I'm not seeing any, like, like I said, I hit it with the, the hot air just to make sure that one cap was doing what it's supposed to. Um, so this is actually a good time to pop up that guide and then just make sure that with, with, when we actually have rivets and vias and everything, uh, is everything connected as we want it to be. So that guy's good. That's good. That's good. Awesome. That's a good start. Uh, awesome. Perfect. Okay, that guy's good. Uh, and then we want to make sure these are connected. Wait, no, these are connected. No, these are connected. <laughs> I'm doing great. This is great. Um, that one and this guy. Yep. Okay, and then this guy all the way down to here, I think. Yep. Beauty. Here, over to here. Absolutely. Man, this is going great so far. That guy, yep, and then one more is this one to here. Oh, is that, I think that is that tone one. Um, okay, so let's. Okay, so this. So you can see that this this line is connected, but the the the, the uh, rivetless via is not. So that's not good. But I'm going to try my old trick that seems to work. Um, we're just going to put some more uh, ink on it, and we're going to heat it up. Some hot air. Hot air. So now, long term, like this ink probably won't cure properly. Correct. Uh, but. For our prototyping here to, uh, yeah, basically prove that the, the board can work. Yep. Um, it should do the trick. Yeah. Yeah, this should actually, this should work all right. And uh, what I'm going to do, like, after I've, um, because of the nature of stomp boxes and um, those, these types of things, 
I'm actually going to be encasing a lot of the final build in uh, UV cure resin. Um, and that's, that's just because they get, they get bashed around. It's going to be in a box. It's going to get stepped on. I want to make sure that even if you kicked it across the room accidentally, we're not going to have SMT components uh, popping off. Yeah. So. Yeah. They'll get thrown in a backpack or right. thrown in the back of a truck, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we all go see Nathan's next show. When Nathan finds the next show. Yeah. <laughs> You said you opened for Plant Smashers once, right? Oh, yeah. That's the coolest thing I ever heard in my entire life. Yeah. So I was in a ska band, and yeah, we, just... we opened for pretty much all our Were you playing bass or were you playing trumpet? I was playing trumpet. Oh, that. dude. Yeah. We've got we to make a ska band. I'm, like, so into that. I'm, I'm down. I want, the, there's yeah. nothing more I want than for us to make a ska band. I got the shoes for it. And you got the shoes for it. Of you got I better have, shoes than I do for it. Of course I have it. the shoes for oh, it. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, man, we're doing it. So yeah, I got my I got my uh, heat gun at 250. I'm just heating. I just put some ink down. I'm just heating it real quick, giving it a little blast. Um, and that, I'm basically just looking to see that it changes color. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you look at our material data sheet for these, uh, I think it needs to be around 210, 220 for about 20 minutes to fully cure. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't th and this was, this was purely just a thing that I tried at home. Um, like, this is not, no guarantees. I wouldn't, don't, you know, try it your own peril. But, let's see. Right? Um, so now if I flip this over, and I make that test again. Uh, and that was here to here. Oh, we have a connection, but the top isn't happy. That's interesting. Right? Yeah, okay. Um. Oh, I see. Okay, I think I know what's going on. Let me just, whoop. Interesting, okay. So it looks like this particular issue is, um, I mean, it was an issue that I just corrected, but it also appears that this rivet isn't necessarily as well connected as I would like. Which will happen does happen absolutely okay let's okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do I'm gonna hit the top actually the same way I just did the bottom because um, I'm also curious about like how this is seated but all part of the process such is the nature of prototypes But yeah, I just want to make sure that, like, I mean, we're at the point where we're about to put all the components, all the, we're going to add all the switches, and, like, we're, we're basically done. But I really want to make sure that all these connections are as good as they can be before I do that, because if I don't, it's, it's going to be a bad time. It's going to be a bad time. It's going to be a bad time. Get your T-shirts soon. I'm like I'm 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 gonna be honest. I'm actually a little shocked that we don't have more people in the office trying to like mess with us through the window. And yeah. frankly, and frankly, for anyone for anyone who is in the office and listening to this stream, I'm disappointed. Yeah. To be fair, uh, <laughs> there's a lot to do right now. Yeah, that's fair. And they're all super busy. We had to wheel like four carts out of this room that were all full of parts so that they could access them. That's fair. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot going on. But yeah, I'm also disappointed. Right? That's no excuse. Yeah, right? There's always time for pranks. <laughs> always. Man, this one bit is being a real pain. Okay, but we do, we always have solutions. Solutions are what we do. Um, okay, so it looks like the top and bottom are now good. I think, yeah, I think it's actually, so the one of the problems with rivets is that, well, one of the problems with this particular rivet 
uh, and I don't know how well you can see, but some of these you can see they've actually folded over quite well. This particular one really hasn't. It looks like it's sort of crushed into its, its like hole. Mm. Um, so I think what's actually happened is it's this side is where the problem exists, and it's not actually folded over on top. And uh, this, so here I'm going to just be kind of careful, but I'm just going to add a little bit of ink here and patch this guy up. It may, it, it's one of those ones where it may actually resolve itself because it, this, this is a, a component that was going to have a, a wire go through it and it may have actually resolved itself naturally when we soldered the wire in, but I'm just not super confident about that and I really don't want to risk it, so I'm just going to add some material and make my life easier. As you do. As I do. As I do. Now I'm waiting for window pranks, but. I know, I know, I'm so ready. I look <laughs> over and it's like, no, nah, it's just Tom. Just Tom explaining things. As he does. PCB assembly ASMR would be uh, probably oh, yeah. a highly watched channel. Yeah, potentially. We, we've also joked about just having a V1 that runs continuously for like 24 hours as an ASMR channel for people to watch see the thing is for me like i'm i, I like I say i've been around for a long time my v1 still freaks me out because it's so quiet yeah because i'm used to the old ones yeah that had the the loud stepper drivers so they the, 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 the so the motors were louder and they'd like hold in place and like yeah i realize people like quiet things i prefer the old way i'm weird um and yeah it, it like it, yeah it's weird for me to hear quiet ones i i like it when it does this little r2d2 thing it's awesome I don't care what anyone says. There we go. Good connection. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Okay, cool. It's a good beep. A good beep. Good beeps, buddy. Right? Right? Another Star Wars reference? Come on. Come on, Shelly. Get into it. Um, all right. So now we can start putting this together. Man, we've come so far together. Yeah, we're this close. We're this close. Literally this close. Time to get serious. Yeah. For those who can't see, Mike's putting his hair up because he's he means business now. I mean business. Also, he probably doesn't want to burn his hair with the soldering iron. That is but the main reason, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be that would be the primary primary reason for putting my hair up. Because I don't want to burn my hair with the soldering iron again. Uh boop. Ah. So we did have that question earlier about oh, yeah. hot tips for uh, soldering. Nice. So, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the perfect time to just go in a bit more detail as you're doing it, I think. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. That was, it was intentional, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm just making sure, because, yeah. like, oh. yeah, I know, but you didn't, you, didn't, you didn't milk it at all. So yeah. I was like, does, does, he, does, he, does, he he, does, does he know he said that? Is he, is he aware? I don't, I don't know if he knows that he did the thing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, cool. Um, just as a heads up for everyone, all my beautiful people, uh, this is not the one. Is this the one? You know, sometimes I'm just a dumb guy. Uh, oh, this is the one. Long wires is the one. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. I just, I have, um, I wired these all very particularly. Um, so I'm just, I actually use a bad board as a reference so I can just wire things up and I don't have to think about it. Okay, um, beautiful. So, uh, yeah, we're going to do some soldering. Um, I'm setting my sweet, sweet iron. Um, normally, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask the support guy, what temperature am I supposed to set it to? Mm, are you using our solder? Uh, technically, yes, but it's an older <laughs> solder. But this isn't a trick. I'm actually, so I, I have my, my iron. I'm setting it to 230. Okay. Um, that's, and that's, that's what I've been using yeah, to build this we board. We typically recommend between 180 and 190. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little bit Especially for a, a new user with the silver inks. Yes. Um, playing it safe at the lower temperature will save you from disappearing traces and 
and uh, yeah, and, and wicking silver ink. Yes, that is definitely true. Um, I also uh, not only like do I have a bit of experience with doing this, but additionally, I um, uh, we're using rivets. Yep. So rivets, obviously, you you don't have to worry about those melting on you. Um, so you can usually use a little bit more um, uh, heat. Yeah. And you're also using flux? Which I'm going to be using flux, yeah. Um, especially because I'm using rivets. I probably, I wouldn't be as inclined to, to flux, although flux is always a good idea. Like, never, never don't use flux if you have the option. Um, nice double negative, yeah. You know what? Uh, yeah, that's fair. Um... Yeah, uh, don't, yeah, use it, use it if you've got it. Smoke them if you got them, as I say. Um, but it's not absolutely essential. Um, but it will make your life easier. And I especially find it easier when I'm doing uh, with rivets. Because then I can just, I can just hit it with a little bit of heat and uh, my... My uh, solder is going to go exactly where I want it to. Ugh. Big thank you to my dad for all my sweet hardware. This is this is my own like reflow station and and soldering iron and and whatnot. And my dad's always been really supportive ever since I was a kid of me doing like crazy projects. So a lot of times. Big shout out to Mike's dad. Big shout out to Mike's dad, <laughs> the chemistry teacher, who is horribly disappointed that I didn't take chemistry, I'm sure. Um, oh, uh, here. Here, to make yourself useful. Um, LED goes in the, you know yeah, what the LED, the LED hole. Yeah. The LED hole, yeah. Yeah, because I, yeah, that's, so the, there's one component that actually has to be sort of soldered after it's been assembled because it's, it comes in from the top rather than up from the bottom. Crush washer underneath? Um, yeah, and that, that was, that was probably just bad design on my part, frankly, but whatever, whatever. All right, let's grab, where are my wire strippers, wire strippers. It's not tight enough. So I like to twist off, um, I twist off all my wires um, just so they try and stay in a bundle. Um, that's actually, this is actually, um, I mean, it's a big problem with any, anytime you're doing through hole with uh, like braided wire like this. Uh, if you have like one loose wire that you don't even see and it's sort of sticking through, you can run into issues where it shorts something. Um, yep, yeah, I will do that momentarily. I should have just moved it so it was at the edge of the table. Um, all right. Okay. Now, you may also note, like, these solder joints are not the best. Um, because of the nature of this project and the fact that like there's lots of little bits and I I'm also kind of rushing this uh, these solder joints are not going to be absolutely phenomenal however um, it's not going to be as necessary that they be particularly good because like I say I'm actually going to be encasing a fair amount of this in UV cure resin so <clears throat> I don't really need to worry too too much about uh, how mechanically strong the solder joints are. They just need to be electri electrically conductive. Okay, a little worried about that one. Because you might be able to see I actually took a little bit of the trace off there. 
there. It was a little too aggressive. But it looks like it's still connected. I suppose we'll find out soon enough. So when you're soldering to the conductive ink, yep. um, you want a much lighter touch yeah. than, you, than when you're uh, soldering to a traditionally manufactured board, for sure. Right? Absolutely. That's, that's probably one of the biggest tips. Is, totally. Yeah, go in super gentle and, um, yeah, don't stay there too long. Okay, those are still good. Yeah, that's definitely a big one. Um, and I'm sure you get that. That's that's one of the sort of more common because, of course, when you're when you're when you're soldering, when you learn to solder, um, you know you're used to working with copper, so you just kind of go ham um, and and just you know put a lot of force, put a lot of uh, solder. Like you don't you don't have to be as careful. And so I think it can actually be kind of tricky for people who are very familiar with soldering going yep. to do with the, with the V1. And like, I used to, I actually I used to work for a, a, a company that made solar panels. And I, I literally, I, I worked in a factory. And I soldered for 12 hours a day, right? And so I got, I was very familiar with soldering. I was, I, I got very good at it. Um, and, you know, I had, I learned methods and I, I had ways to do it. And yeah, I definitely had to learn a little bit when I, when I started using the V1 and, and how to solder. And that's why I say, I, I recognize that some of these joins are not ideal joins. But honestly, it's it's not a beauty contest. They they just need to work really. Yeah. And, and when you are working with low temperature solder, yep, uh, oftentimes they will look like cold solder joints, even though they're perfectly fine too. That is true. The solder just it, yeah it balls up a little differently. Do you need your uh, pedal stand again? Oh, no, no, that's cool. I'll, I'll, I'll figure some out, but thank you. I just need to, like, I'm not, I'm not soldering with my sort of normal method. Normally, I actually hold, I usually hold the, like, solder tube in my teeth. And then use my face. The other thing um, to keep in mind as well, um, so uh, the, I very explicitly designed this, or I, I assembled this in such a way, I put the rivets so the big face is on the front. Um, that's because I want, generally you'll note that a lot of these vias, the bottom for many of them, like this one right here, doesn't connect anything. So it does, it, it's more likely that the, the, the side you deform is maybe problematic. Um, like maybe it didn't deform quite right or, you know, it's not, it's not touching the ink or maybe it even like takes off some of the, the pad around it. All those things can happen. Um, so if I know that, then I can make sure that the side that's more likely to have a problem is the one that is less likely to cause further problems if there's an error. Uh, and that is why I put the rivets in from the top. Because, yeah, you might, you might think, and this is how I, I would have previously done it, would be to put them in the other way so that I have the most metal contact possible when I'm, when I'm soldering. Because like, if, I, if I was soldering the other way up, I'd have this big, this big flat copper head that I could, I could touch things to. But that's actually not as useful as... You might think. We're getting we're getting kind of close. I'm I'm like I really want to get this thing done, and I'm totally I'm totally finishing this one way or t'other, for the record. But um, obviously we're only we're only booked till three. Yeah, um, but we're we're pretty close. Although if it doesn't work, I don't, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep you guys around with like trying to debug this if there's some sort of issue with something. But we're gonna cross our fingers and we're gonna hope that this works. And you know, even if it doesn't, we do have a working model that is sitting over there. So we do. We do. So we can we can show it in effect. We have the 
the TV magic crutch if we need it. Right? Exactly. Um, I don't know if we have any other like specific questions or if you had anything else that was like saved up. Nope. Nope. Cool. Chat's uh, just watching along. Cool. I can dig it. As long as people are happy. That's all I really care about. So back when I uh, back when I used to solder all day, uh, I uh, I got trained by this delightful lady, um, and there were a lot of there were a lot of um, a lot of people who worked there. Um, it was a, a, it was actually a, a large percentage of, of females, um, super nice ladies. They were like the sweetest people on the planet, um, and many of them were from the Philippines. Oh, interesting. And, yeah, I thought, I thought it was really cool and that, like, I, I always love meeting people from other places because, like, I, I'm, like, the most non-traveled person on the planet. Um, and, but they gave me a nickname. Um, and it was uh, Pogi, which I'm told means handsome, but I, do, I never actually <laughs> checked it because I did. I was like, you know what? I don't, just in case, I'm not going to risk it. But, uh, yeah, but I, my, so my understanding is that the Tagalog, word pogey means handsome and if someone's in chat and is going to correct me don't shatter my dreams chat agrees <laughs> filipinos are the best so okay yeah no no comments on your nicknames yeah. beauty all well, right chat can confirm that it means handsome oh did someone looked it up yeah oh awesome thank you chat or you know what don't even tell me if you didn't look you just you just agreed and i was like yes that's what i need today all right, uh, where's Tone? Tone is this one. Okay. Yeah, chat's all over it. Nice. Yeah, it was a really interesting job, actually. Um, there's a lot to, like, solar. It's very weird. I really didn't understand how, like, solar panels worked and, like, doing rework on them and, like, like soldering them. Like, they're exceptionally delicate, so you have to be, like, really careful, mm. but... Yeah, it was really cool. Okay, so I got to do this one backwards, right? I think I do. This is the tone one. Uh, which means red is up, right? Uh, no, I want to show all waves. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, so volume, one, two, three, one, two, three, and then right. Okay, so black is one, right? Yes. Okay, black's on the bottom, which means red's on the top. Okay, cool. The tone knob should work in the appropriate direction. As long as it works in a direction. You know what? I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. That's fair. I'll take it. Good one. 
flux is your friend. Okay. All right. So the real question, I mean the real so like yeah, we may we may not actually get to like full assembly. But once this is done, we'll be able to plug it in, test it, and make sure that like it as soon as it, this happened. It, yeah. yeah, it does the thing. So we're taking bets. Yeah, what's the over under chat? You, you think you think it's gonna Do we think it's gonna work? Because I mean this that's prototyping, man. Like sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And you know, we'll we'll be able to it will be made to work. That's not a problem. It's just a question of does it work the first time you plug it in? And that's always, that's always the real mystery when you've got at least kind of one believer in chat. Yes, whoever that is, they're my hero. And I mean, it's always great when stuff does just work the first time, and then you can just put it in the box, and away you go. But when you're doing prototyping. You kind of want stuff to not work the first time, too. That's true. If you're going to, like, make changes or, like, figure stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, it's always, you're always kind of nervous if it works the first time. You're like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Like, what is, I'm, because it's not, you don't think that it works the first time. You think that you're missing something. Yeah. That you're not catching the glaring flaw in front of your exactly. face. Exactly. Yeah. So, it's, yeah, if you don't, if it doesn't, <laughs> if there's no issue right away, yeah. then you're just constantly waiting for the big issue to pop up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, when I did um, the current, like, super secret thing uh, that uh, everyone else is working on right now, um, I did some of the design work for some of the early, early boards. And I remember I was doing uh, the, the main, like, the main board, uh, and uh, I, um, I designed it, I got everything good, I, like, I, I, I put it all, I ordered it, and this, I think this was the first, like, real design I'd ever done. Like, I, I mean, I'd, I'd made, like, little boards and whatnot, but this is, like, this is a thing that's going to be for a commercial product. It had to, I had to learn how um, Ethernet interfaces worked and, like, how to add, a, like, a controller chip for that and, and all sorts of cool... It was super fun. I loved it. Yeah. And we ordered the board, and I got it in. I was so excited. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't tell you how excited I was to, like, finally be like, oh, look, look at me. Look at me, Mom. Um, I was so happy, and I assembled it. I put all things together. Wouldn't work, and like I'm like, what? Like, what's going on? And I started trying to debug it. I started doing all these things to try and fix it, and it got to the point where we actually started cutting the board into halves to see <laughs> like where which half is the problem. <laughs> and it turns out at like the the power entry section, like where we get power. I had accidentally connected the ground plane to the power. Nice. So, like, the whole board was just garbage. Yeah, that would do it. And, and foolishly, I was so excited, I just went straight and assembled it. Like, I populated an entire main board, spent, like, an entire day putting it together, and it didn't work. And, like, yeah, that was a, that was a learning experience. And, yeah, I felt really dumb because it was a super simple thing that I totally should have caught. Um, Remember, always do your design rule checks, folks. Right? You always got to check those things. And, like, I get it. I mean, I'm not, I'm not the expert that a lot of our, our viewers are, but, like, everybody, everybody, you know, we all make mistakes. We all mess stuff up. And, like, yeah, it was a good learning experience. And, like, the thing is, there were, there were other problems with the board, too. Like, once, once we got that sorted and I built another thing, I found out other things, and I had to learn about, like, the like magnetic coupling of Ethernet ports and how that's like built into some of them, and otherwise you need to like have a special chip for it. And like I didn't know any of that. And I used to be I used to like manage networks, but like I don't worry about the actual hardware, right? Like right. I know how to plug things in and like make them talk to each other and like worry about what layer they're talking on and all that kind of stuff. Um, I never had to worry about like, yeah, is 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 the port that I'm using actually equipped with the right stuff? Um, so yeah, it was, it was really interesting to learn all that. Um, oh, 
I thought you were, I don't know, I don't know why. I don't know, do you, I assume you knew what that sound was, the Velcro. See, no, see, I, I see, and I, initially I was like, maybe it's food, but I thought it was a juice box. I'm getting I thought it, Mike's super fancy cable It's so pink. For, for bass testing. I thought, I totally thought that it was like a juice box. Like the, like, you know, the straw in a juice box. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. That's what it is. He's like, oh, man, he's got juice boxes? Ripping the corner. I want a juice yeah. box. I was so gel. We should go get juice boxes after this. So I saw the Arizona iced tea in juice box format. Weird. And I was like, man, if they just did the Arnold Palmer in juice box format. Dude, I've been buying, I've been oh. buying lemonade and iced tea, and I mix it at home, and I just yeah. have a big thing. Yeah. I know. I'm with you. Yeah. It's the drink of the summer. Every summer. Dude, the... Man. Classic. Keep getting yelled at for being in a frame. Make your frame better. I blame you for this. Um, yeah, I the like raspberry Arizona is like my my favorite drink. It's a good drink. The only thing that is more my favorite drink than that is lemon fruitopia, which they don't make anymore. Oh yeah. It was the best. And my mom, who is an abs or was an absolute legend, she found out when the last shipment was coming to our like local grocery store no way. as a kid. She went in and bought twenty cases of it. 20. I like woke up that morning and like came in and then she just had this like she tower. She bought the last delivery. She just, yeah, she bought the whole thing. <laughs> it was amazing. And I just had Fritopia the whole summer and no one else did. And then it was done. And it was done. I saved like the last can for so long before I drank it. That was awesome. Yep. This is the final one for the switch. Then I just got to do the output jack, and we're good. How are we doing for time? Oh, real we close. Got, uh, yeah, Man. two and a half minutes. Man, good thing we skipped that bake step. Ooh. Yeah. Right. Although we still got riveting in. Like, we still, like, that board could be assembled now. All right. It's the right kind of TV magic. Kit. Yeah, yeah, totally, totally. Man, having a good pair of wire strippers is like the bee's knees, as they say. Okay, uh, blue is over here. Oh, that was bad. That was super bad. <sighs> Gonna have to check that. <laughs> I took off a bit of a trace. Um, I can fix it. I can always fix it. But that, that made me nervous. It actually may still be good, though. It's, it's unclear. But I'll just hit it with the multimeter real quick before we plug it in, just to make sure. And I'll correct it if I need to. go. All right. Let's see if this is still connected as it should be. Seems to be. All right. All right. All right. So we have All a right. done board. Um, oh, I need my battery. All right. Uh, battery. I don't, do, we, do we have a camera that like shows the, not really. Shows the what? Uh, the, you, I just want to make sure that you can be seen. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. I like camera. Cool. So we need we need the this this is from you. Oh yeah. This is gonna be great. Okay, we can get that out of the way. Oh yeah, okay, we can, we can close the laptop. Yeah. I hope it's not like running anything. Stream just died. Right. I'm just like, is that okay? So uh, in so is this this is to the amp. That is to the amp. Okay, yeah. cool. So that's our out. Oh, well, let's make sure bass is going to the stream, too. They're called Kim Wipes. Get it right. Okay. I don't know if, also, I don't know if this is on or not, for the record. Okay. Okay. I don't think I'm getting any signal currently. No signal? 
Oh. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, so maybe th these just need to be turned on. So, so you're we're in pass through right now. Yeah. So let me just I'm gonna crank everything all the way. Oh up. yeah. Crank it. Crank it like Soldier Boy. Nope. All right, something is funky. What could it be? I would assume something in the circuit. <laughs> keep keep like doing stuff. Yep. Getting a little pop there. Getting some pops, yeah. Just checking these joints. It's possible. Just checking to see if we have maybe a short somewhere. Making sure wires aren't causing the problem. Okay, that still works. Alright, well this is gonna take some debugging, unfortunately. Well we can switch over yep. to our Let's TV magic pre-made pedal. Poke at that. All right, yeah, beautiful. Uh, okay, in, out, beauty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tone without. Yep. Yeah. Does the thing? It's, it's a fuzz pedal. It, it, it's a fuzz pedal. Like yeah. it, it fuzzes. Who can complain? It's fuzzy. Yeah. It's fuzzy. Now I gotta figure out what's wrong with this guy. But like, it does do the thing. It does the thing. I'm sorry that, that this one didn't work first try, but hey, next time we gotta schedule some debug time on the stream. I'm gonna start poking at this though. Uh, but yeah, just to close out. Yeah, if you enjoyed yeah. this, uh, let us know. Um, For sure. If you'd like to see more of these, let us know as well. Uh, yeah. I think we had a lot of fun, and thanks to everyone who. Stuck through to the end. I had the most fun. Yeah. Oh man, she's like, get in frame. Yeah. I'm trying to debug here. But I'm yeah, excited. on that note, I think we're good to end. So we'll yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see it. you all later. Yeah, yeah. Also, yeah, feel free to hit us with any questions, whatever you need. Um, you know, su support at Voltaire.io. It's a good place. We'll be we'll be waiting for you. <laughs>